not 12. It was perfect for me. Man, you ain't go home. See, that's why I, I did. I went you, straight you, home. I you, was too. I couldn't. I ain't go nowhere else. You my, went home? Yeah, my house only like two minutes away. I live two minutes away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I went yeah, straight almost, home. Been, I been almost right. said my whole street. I know. <laughs> No, I went straight home because I was like, okay, I'm going to change. I don't want to wear this to the club. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, well, I'm just lay down for a minute. 4 a.m. Shit me. Woke up at 4 and was like, mm-hmm. what happened? <laughs> you might be a party animal, but uh, them 30s, you can't lay down to talk no. about going nowhere. 30s don't give a fuck about so that. Over with. I was so hot. I, was so high, could, I just was, I was like on a cloud. I was like, I feel great. Oh, man. Yeah, Answer so. this question, right? I got a question. What's the... um? What's the proper age to do cool shit with your children, like grown folk shit with your children? What you mean by grown? Yeah, it, you got to specify grown yeah. folk shit. Smoking with them, drinking oh. with them, hanging out with them. I let to near because my, my, me, it's going to be something totally different then. Yeah, you got mm-hmm. a girl. And you can give me the girl version and the son version and the daughter version. Give me both. So, um, I, you know, growing up wild like that, I did. I, I actually. Um, was uh, under the age when I started smoking weed because um, I had real bad periods. They were saying, like, endometriosis and stuff at a young age. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a family member who was just like, don't put her on none of that stuff. Just let her smoke some weed here and there. So I, people never, but I always was told. How old were you then? 12, 13, one of those. Okay. Um, But it could only be when it was for that, and it could only be, at the house. If I was ever caught out of the house doing it, it would be the same trouble as if. So you smoked the blunt at 12? Yeah, 13, 12 or 13. Mm-hmm. Whenever I started my period, I was like seventh grade, so right. whatever age that was. But um, it's the only thing that would make the cramps not hurt and me not have to be on birth control at such a young age to right. regulate, you know. Um, so then my brothers, though, like uh, my, uh, you know, people we was raised with just always had a rule, like if it's in the house, they would prefer it because at least they know what you're getting and what you're doing. Um, so I never snuck out and never snuck and did any crazy shit because I always knew I could pretty much go to the people I was with. Right. And I didn't feel sneaky to do anything. I didn't feel like I had to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So with my kids, I think they're on, they're little now, so I can't really put in, you know what I'm saying? My son's nine, but I probably That's would. getting close to 12. I would with my son maybe when he was like 16. If he really was like he wanted to smoke, mm-hmm. I'd probably be like 15, 16. Because it's going to become legal anyway. And I do not That's think marijuana good. is a drug. And I would much rather prefer that than some people put their kids on Adderall at five. So I don't really think. Now my girls like fun stuff. Like we do get our nails. I take my girls to get their nails and pedicures now so that they have a routine growing up. I consider that fun yeah, for girls. You can do that whenever, man. Right. I don't. You can, um, yeah. if they have bad periods at the same, I will probably do the same thing that would happen with me, or maybe edibles, because that would probably be better. But I didn't know about that when I was little. I would probably do edibles. But as far as drinking, I don't know if I'm gonna drink with my kids until they out the house. Like if they out the house, they grown and they come home and want to. Take a shot or something, I would. Because I do. I go take a shot with my daddy every other weekend. No, but my daddy's like in his 60s now. So it's different. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my, I'm, I'm cutting dry with mine. Mine is never. Uh, the only day I have a drink with my daughter is on her wedding day. I toast with my, my daughter. Uh, I just feel like there, there's always lines. Me and my daughter have one of the dopest relationships. If you ever see us, we we have a friendship type of relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I have custody, so it's a it's a different daddy daughter dynamic. But at the same time, I, I never want that line to cross because there's always going to be a time that I'm going to want to parent my daughter, no matter whether she's in her twenties or thirties. As long as I'm still alive, there's always going to be a certain level of advice that I want to be able to give her. And when you blur the lines between a friendship and a parent, I feel like that's when advice gets taken a little bit too flimsy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, that's just my opinion. Oh, I'm yeah, not no, saying that whether that's right, that. wrong, or indifferent. Um, yeah, so for my little girl, uh, I'm never going to have a drink. Uh, definitely never smoking with my daughter. She wants to try weed or something like that in her own time. That's for her. She wants to drink in her own time. Uh, for my son, uh, my son, pretty much the same thing. I mean, there is a line that if I'm blessed to be an old, old man, and I guess me and my son are both old as fuck, you know what I mean? If I'm like 60 and that nigga's 40, 
But I guess we can have a yeah. Manhattan or something together. You get what I'm saying? Well, I ain't going to be like. This motherfucker said a Manhattan. Yeah, you know, we can have favorite. a stiff one. Mine too, though. You ever had a Manhattan? <laughs> no. But if you go to a restaurant, get, get a Manhattan, Manhattan. you're going to be drunk when you leave. Yeah, it's, it's just good. one drink. It's good. I don't know what they put in. I think it's white man's skin. I think they shave like a bit of the back of an old white man's hand. And I'm serious, though. It's a stiff drink. I don't know what it is. But black people don't drink that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, when he's maybe that age. but You know, but the first time my dad actually ever wanted to do anything that was, like, cross the lines, it was when his mom died. And I was probably 24. Right. I just finished school, came home, and... He called me and it was late for him and I was kind of confused because he don't, you know, he just like, I think I need to go to a bar and have a drink. There's nobody else that I trust to go with but you. But that's normally when men decide to do something like that. It's, it's like a life changing event. My father was a, a regular smoker, like a pack a day smoker. And uh, he would never give me a cigarette or anything under any circumstances until it was a, uh, I had an issue after court with my baby mama. He was like, you have to choose your child or choose the streets. And that nigga gave me a cigarette and I was like, Oh, this serious. You know what I mean? Like, he really wanted me to, this is a man moment. So, yeah, yeah. But f- what is it for you? Um, for a while, I felt like you feel. I agree with you for a while. But um, I will say that now that I'm getting older and my children are getting older, um, we parent, like, we're all, like, your child is your first child. Mm-hmm. Your ch- children aren't that old yet. Mm-hmm. So me experiencing a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, this is my first more. time experiencing this. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of the things that I think I would, I thought I would never compromise, um, I change now. Because you learn that, um, well, I'm going to go back to the beginning. And my son texted me today. And he was just like, Dad. Uh, you remember you remember when you told me when I turned 18 we was going to spark? And I'm like, spark? I'm like, what you mean, smoke with you? And he sent me the laughing emojis. And then I, that's why I had I had to stop and think for a minute. Now, mind you, I've never told him that. You feel me? I, get, I don't know where you get that right. from. <laughs> but okay. Um, so I stopped for a minute and I said, damn. Um, now, mind you, as my son is getting older, our relationship is like – kind of it's different you know they they have their own life their own type of time mm-hmm. and you rarely see them you rarely talk to them they call you when they need shit mm-hmm. that's where it gets to as they get older so um and he smokes anyway i already know he smoked weed yeah. smoke big weed right so in my head i'm thinking like damn all right cool because i buy this is something i've already thought about before like damn like how do i get control of this situation you feel what i'm saying how do i make how do i gain leverage in this situation because at this point Parenting has become strategic. It's not as simple as it used to be. Yeah, you exactly. Know you parent so I have to outsmart him, and I have to figure out ways to manipulate him into thinking and seeing the way I do without saying think like I think and see how I see. Right. So I think to myself, I say, fuck, no, nah, I ain't ready to smoke with this little nigga yet. But what I will do is this, right? I'm going to try to deter him in a different fashion, and if that doesn't work, then maybe we'll try something else. So what I tell him, I say, um, I say, Matter of fact, I, re- I don't want to say verbatim. I read the text, and I told him. Um, I said, um, I said I've thought about that, and don't know how I feel about it quite yet. Even though I know you do it on your own time anyway, and then this is where the deterrence come from. I said, I quit. Yeah. I said I quit though. I said I felt like it was slowing down my progress and my production. You see that? Right, see how slick right. that is. Yeah, yeah. So he said, Which it does to a degree. So he yeah. said, yes, sir, yes, sir, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And then I came back and said, I'm not trying to control you or stop your emotion, though, if that's what you choose for yourself. Regardless of what you do, I'll never throw you away or or leave you leave your side, you feel me? Right, I'm, right. I'm still here either way. I said, I'm sure we'll smoke plenty together at some point, but that's not what I choose for me in this moment. Yeah. See how that was? Yeah, absolutely. So you have to find, I feel like you have to find clever ways to manipulate your children into thinking the way you think. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So let's say that doesn't work, right? Because the thing about it is if our kids are going to go, we, we've done it. They're going to go do what they want to do, how they do it, whenever, however they want to do it, and there's you have no control over that. So I'm thinking to myself sitting on the couch like, fuck, like this man going to do what he do anyway. So let me, so if that doesn't work, which it probably won't, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Maybe I should smoke a blunt with the little nigga. You feel me? Because what that'll do is make him come. Because what it is now is if I want to smoke and I want to be high, I can't do that around my dad. 
So I'm gonna go elsewhere and be that and be that way, right? But yeah, not so, feel you. So so go ahead. go ahead. No, what are you gonna say? No, because I was gonna say that there is a there is a parallel where like you don't have to. Because th- that was my train of thinking. Mm-hmm. I know I will never drink with my daughter or my son. Mm-hmm. But my only rule is if one of us is drinking, the other one ain't. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to hide that from me. You're an adult. Right. I have no problem. If my daughter is 21, right. 22, and she got a blunt, nothing. nothing. But, but we're not smoking together. But, but, or right. if she, if my, if she, want al- she got alcohol and she, hey, cool, but I'm not drinking with you. Okay. So, That's what that, you know. So, and I get that. So, this is where I'm going. I'm just like, but you also have to understand this is right. There's a, there's a, um, a pact, an unspoken pact or bond that happens when something like that happens for you. Mm-hmm. Because I can remember my dad giving me my first drink. It's something I'll never forget. Right. It's one of the moments that ring out. And he had drinking, drank around me all the time his whole life. You mm-hmm. feel me? And I, he knew I probably did my thing a little bit too. Right. But when he gave me my first drink, you feel me? That was the icebreaker for our relationship. I moved in with him. I could talk to him about anything. Right. It was just something that clicked in me that made me feel like, okay, cool, this is my father, but this is somebody I can confide in. He gotcha. understands me. You feel me? So more so than, um, like, I know he smoked, and I smoke too. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, damn. What it does is it puts you in a position to where you get that guard down a lot of the time. And and it's like I'm learning with my son. When I get, when, Once I get his guard down, he's a sponge. Like, I made him cut his hair off in one conversation. He had wicks. Right. But I, I, I got his guard down. You feel me? Yeah. I got went down to his level, got his guard down, because my way doesn't work. You know, I'm an aggressive parent. I'm an aggressive person. I'm overbearing. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And that, that usually runs them in the opposite direction. Yeah, me too. You feel so me? Good. So I went, I, I took a different approach, and when I got his guard down, the conversation started flowing. You feel me? Yeah. And I never told him what to do. I just explained different things to him. You feel me? Same way I did when in the text message when I was like, I'm not choosing that for me right now. But go ahead. Smoke away. Mm-hmm. Because that has worked on me before, too. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? When your friends say, oh, I don't drink, bro. Oh, I don't eat meat, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Now you kind of like, if it's somebody you admire, look up to you like, damn, maybe I should change my diet. Or, or maybe at least I question stop why. Exactly. Why? Mm-hmm. Right. So with that, um, so I got his guard down. And what I noticed is that he he's open now and he's listening. So I called his grandma later that night. And I'm like, um, what are you doing? You know, what he got going on? And she was like, I don't know what you said to him, but he ended up cutting his hair off. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just learning how, how your how your kids work. Like, I may not have to do that with my younger son. Right. It's just this is how this son is wired. Right. And what I don't want to do, like you say, there, there are blurred lines between friendships and parents, right? But you have to understand, too, though, is that your children sometimes listen to their friends before they listen to you. You feel mm-hmm. me? So if you can if you can create a lane to where you can merge both, because my res- my respect is established. My son has never disrespected I was about me. To say that. You feel mm-hmm. me? So the respect lines are established by default. Yeah. Right. He always looked at me as pops. You feel me? No matter how much I lean, see, I give him, he know when dad turn on is it's it's different. Mm-hmm. So um, for me in that situation, I was just like, damn, bro. Like, may- maybe we rob ourselves of bonding moments and opportunities to get to steer our kids in a certain direction because I can remember several times when my parents lost me or when when I when they when I disconnected from them because we can we can create these rules right and I asked somebody earlier I was just like um I said would you allow your kid to smoke at 16 and they was just like nah I said what what would be the date and the age for you and they was just like maybe 18 I said so 700 more days like what's they like? Yeah. I said, what's the difference between now right. and seven hundred days? It's just the legality. If you, if you have more, if you have morals and you stand on something, you're gonna stand on that for life. Right. It's not gonna be mm-hmm. an age. That's why I appreciate you saying never, never, right. you that feel means me? because that's that means really, you stand on that yeah. and that's what you believe. Yep. But I don't believe in setting the gap on anything. Yeah. Like our society has handicapped our children mm-hmm. and their learning abilities by putting an age on everything. You got to be this old before you can take out the trash. You got to be this old before you can learn how to drive. You got to be this old before you learn how to right, shoot a gun. Right, right. And other cultures, bro. As soon as you can walk and talk, you got an assignment. Yeah. There is no right age There's, for pretty much right, anything. anything. Yeah. And we talked about that with the women earlier, even mm-hmm. in our culture with 14, 15. They're like, that's too young to be having sex. I'm like, bro, they were making babies at that age in other cultures. Right, you right. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's just it's just a thing that, like, whatever you stand on, stand on it. It shouldn't have a time stamp on it because there's no time stamp for learning. Yeah. You feel me? That's why there are kids in Asia that are smarter than adults over here because there's mm-hmm. no time stamp for learning. And we rob ourselves of opportunities to be closer to our friends, our family, not just our children. And with the rules that we set and yeah. the ideas that we grasp onto that we don't even understand why we have them. Right. Somebody gave us that. 
You feel me? The reason why we don't smoke and drink with our children with our children is because somebody taught us that that wasn't the way to go. You feel what I'm saying? But the scariest thing for me with that is is that you know, and I'm never talking to you two in the oh, room. Yeah. I understand mm-hmm. that, you know, you two are rational, intelligent creatures. You guys, you know, you, you understand, you know, a, there's a scale to everything. You get what I'm saying? There's for balance sure. to everything. For sure. But what people tend to do is look for confirmation bias. Mm-hmm. We've all seen that parent who was more of a friend than a parent. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. We all in high school knew that parent that would drink with all of us, that would go get us right. liquor. Right. We all knew that parent. And then all of a sudden that parent decided to parent that child that day and that child wasn't gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mm-hmm. wasn't, I'm not listening. You know why they didn't listen? Because I view you as more of a homie. Right. Don't try to parent me now. You the one that buy me liquor. You, mm-hmm. you, I see you in here drunk. You passing blunts. You buy weed from my friends. So now you coming in here try to parent. Mm-hmm. So the reason why... You know, I'm always careful with that is because I know a listener will hear that and that's confirmation bias. Yeah, that's why that's right, why I right, roll right. up yeah. with my kid. No, no, no. no, no that no. man is talking about a my moment, thing. a bonding experience with, right. with his grown son. Right. He did not say that we was gonna be regular everyday smoking right. partners. Right. And you get what I'm saying? Because people mm-hmm. take it that way. Right. And I right. think a lot of times too, like with your specific situation, like even though I grew up real crazy, the bond I have with my daddy is something so special to me that mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter what age I ever get. That's the person on earth that I would listen to before anyone. You know, like, that's my... I don't look at him as a friend, ever. It was more so for me that time when he called and was like, let's go to the bar and take a shot. I'm like, he finally trusts me as an adult. Mm-hmm. That's what how age I, were you? I was 24, 23, okay. 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was shocking because I'm like, there's so many people he could have called. Right. And I was the one that at the time he felt like, I guess to be vulnerable with yeah. and trusted me at a bar. He never took me anywhere like this, mm-hmm. you know, maybe a Dave and Buster's or something, but right. never to a, anything where he's drank. So it was like, I felt it, 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 it hyped it up. Then I was able to tell him, so this is really what happened when I was in college. And this is really, you know, cause yeah, yeah, before yeah. that I didn't feel comfortable. I thought I would be judged, you know, a little, and I, mm-hmm. they, I would be disappointing to him. And it wasn't that. And now to this day, it's like, when I see him, I see the proudness in his eyes. I know like, the things I do, he approves. Like, he knows I smoke. Right. I cuss a little. Not for real. Like, I might say hell or something. But I still know a respect line. Like, I still know a boundary. I ain't going to be like, what's up, dad? What the I know better than that. Mm-hmm. Like, but he didn't have to say those things. It right. was instilled in the way you raise your daughter. If you was to leave today... She, was she good. No, no, absolutely. And, I, and I understand so that. Anyway, I don't think there's nothing wrong with 24. I'm just saying I personally... Oh, no, I know. Because... Here's a random question for y'all too, though. Uh, I don't know if you remember your parents when they were your age, mm-hmm. right? My parents, to me, visually, you know, offense to my parents, my mom watching, old. they look old. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you, you get were, what I'm saying, yeah. and I'm sure I look old. Don't you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm. I look young around here, but when I go to the school and I see other parents, I don't look like them. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying. So, like, do you ever like? Wonder how your kids view you. Like right. I'm, like me right. and you, we both rap. Right. You just dropped the album. Right. right? Whose daddy dropped it? Right. It's dropping albums. My daughter, like TikToks, my music, and it's like right. you get what I'm saying. Right. For me, for me, it's the um, it's the psychology of it all for me. That's why I'm glad you um put out that disclaimer that it's just not me wanting to smoke with my child. Mm-hmm. It's the psychology of it all, dude. Doc, parenting is a constant struggle with like mental, things. mental, yeah, yeah, like you having a mental battle with this child. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And um, I understand, and and I I also understand this. It's not. I don't think it's a matter of looking old. Um, anything that you're familiar with is old. Your daughter wakes up and sees you every, every day. day. You feel right, what I'm saying? Right. Like LeBron James, if you were to ask his children who his fa- who their favorite players it player would. is, it probably won't be him. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Your dad's the goat. You feel what I'm saying? It's right. probably gonna be Kevin Durant or somebody who's equal his age, but mm-hmm. you still fuck with him. So it's the same thing. It's just hard to um. It's hard for them to um. It's hard for people to expect to respect or appreciate something that's so close to them. That's why, um, in anything that you do, the people close to you are going to usually be the last ones to support you because you just Tania, right? You right. just you just that's Darnell. Right. I'm just Am One. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's hard for them to latch on to what you're doing and respect it unless they were there in the beginning stages and help you build what you're building. Oh, no. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, Agree. But what I, I guess what I was getting at is like even the LeBron scenario, mm-hmm. like. Or or either of our scenarios, mm-hmm. like your kid will wear something that you have on. Right. 
I would never wear something my dad wore. Like I feel like oh. the, the gaps. Right. I just yeah. feel like the gaps are like it is different. The gaps the have, pe- they have yes, clothes. It's like they have clothes. It's not I, the same. Right. When my parents got in the yeah. car when I was a kid, and they cut on music. I never liked nothing they cut but on. You know right. why? Like, there was no. Yeah. Right. Right. We're millennials. Mm-hmm. We're the gap. They call us the. We're the in between. Right. We're in between the Xers who had were raised off only tradition, mm-hmm. and the uh, Z people who were raised off only information technology. Yeah. yeah. We had a little of both. So for us, they were so odd. But for ours, we are cool. Yeah, yeah. but I think, we, we I listen think, to the same yeah. music. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's because though, bro. Um, being that um, we live in a social world, a social uh, a social media world, um, and we have since we were in middle school, it started at what yeah. MySpace, um, like Black Planet, shit like <laughs> that, right? Yeah. But we yeah. we live in the same world as our children. Yeah. We didn't live in the same world as our parents. Right. right, right you feel right. me? Our parents had separate lives, like. They, we don't know, like, to this day, you don't know what your dad and mom did when they went to hung out. You don't know what the club looked like for them. That's true, though. You, you don't I know, always picture some you, old shit in my mind. Like, right. what is the club like? Right, you don't yeah. you don't think they was wilding like you wilding because right. you don't you don't visually get to see that. Yeah, yeah. But our children get to see us do everything because every, everything we do is documented. Everything yeah. we do is videoed and on Facebook and on Instagram. So it's like all they got to do is go to your Instagram to see you cutting up like them and you're a part but of what they are. that's why it's so important, like, the, what you said about the mental, like, having that psychological Mm -hmm. conversation and bond with your son Mm -hmm. is why it's so important because our parents always just said it's grown folks business stay out of it and that's why we can't parent like our parents parent parented because we're parenting against different things yeah so if you come in with that old ass mindset of trying to parent your kids how your parents parented you they don't live in the same environment bro that's why we can't open world and then we're gonna be closed and that's why we can't we can't put the same expectations on our children and that's why our children suffer from things that we didn't suffer from Mm -hmm. you've never heard a motherfucker at our age say they had mental health issues or depression it's because you weren't living under the same pressures you got to be a kid you got to do kid shit until you were a teenager it was it was levels to growing up now and now there aren't levels to growing up motherfucker six doing the same thing as a motherfucker 12 and 12 doing the same thing as a motherfucker 18 we all they're all mimicking the same thing it's because we're all in the same pot that's why you have adults and who, who who act like their children yeah. and children who act like adults. I, listen, you took the word. So who is that more dangerous for? Is this more dangerous for the older crowd or the younger crowd? I, think I say the older. I think it's more dangerous for the older I crowd. Do. And I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you why. Because the power that our parents had over us was shut the fuck up. That was and it. you ain't grown. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's just like with this, with, with all of this shit that we experience comes more freedom of sp- speech and, and more entitlement. That's why we're forced to respect our children's wishes now. Right. Like when we, when we grew up, we ate whatever the fuck our mama cooked. Yeah. Shit, my daughter still, well, we don't cook much, but, but if she gonna eat whatever. But, yeah. but she get more I, options than I did as a kid. I right. I'm with you. Right, right. right. Like, so yeah, yeah. like we, we nah, they have an I, option. You yeah. feel me? Like even if it's, we like, I we had McDonald's on the 1st and 15th. Right. That's when the only time I ate fast food was on the 1st and 15th. Right, right. You feel what I'm saying? And we were lucky to get that. And we like cherish that little toy in the box. Yeah. I don't motherfuckers throw that out the window now. Nah, that was we like something that. we collected. So we put yeah. that in the window seat. Right. But these children, like, so in that so in the household, that was definitely not a choice. It was whatever was on the stove, that's what you ate. But they they have a choice. Like I've seen people cook separate meals for separate children. I mm-hmm. do. Insane. You feel would, me? Would never. In, insane. Would. Insane to me. But I, I think I think but I think what happens with that is that because we we're in the um our, our parents didn't thrive to please us. They right. th- they thrive to keep us alive. <laughs> you feel me? Exactly. They didn't give a damn if you was happy, but you alive. Our parents give a damn about if we happy, so they d- develop a level and a sense of entitlement that we didn't have. And that entitlement is the same. That's why I say white people have the audacity. I always talk about white people when I talk about this because they raise their kids different. They've been doing this way before the oh, social yeah, media yeah. era. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? They already had an opinion. You feel me? So it's just like our kids are now getting the audacity. You feel me? And when they have the audacity, guess what? They're going to challenge a lot of the shit you say. You feel me? And you better have a good answer or they're not going to follow your lead. Yeah. So it forces you to be a better parent. So if you are a shitty parent, your kids are usually going to go in the opposite direction of you. You feel me? Agreed. Because I did. I watched I watched situations where I felt like, damn, this is a shitty situation. Right. These are shitty people. You feel me? I need to build my own person. Yeah. You feel me? Because I don't like the person that they are, the people that they are. And our children are learning to do that. You feel me? Usually it's like shitty people raise shitty people, but right. that's not being that's not a thing anymore because we have other things to look at to gauge what we want to be as. You feel me? So, agree. Nah, I like it though. Good start though. I like that. 
I wasn't just cooking four meals because they didn't like it either. It was it was real. Stuff. One of your kids a picky eater. Huh? You like a picky ki- eater? Um, no, uh, I breastfed them, so they have mom. open palates. It's just like um, Cannon for a while couldn't have spicy. I only like the fact your kid got a palate. What's I feel like a kid should have no palate. On when you <laughs> breastfeed them, whatever right. you eat, they tend to be okay with those flavors as they grow up. So like. I didn't really have oh, kids. I research you. Go ahead. Yeah. You're probably I, right, though. I don't know. I don't got titties. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't breastfed either. Yeah, so I breastfed each of them two years except the last baby. She kind of oh. weaned herself around nine months. So they never did formula. They didn't even have bottles unless I was at work. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. pretty much their palate, meaning their taste buds, was open to more things because formula yeah. tastes like shit and breast milk does not. Right. So I would eat things that were different like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and this and this and that, and they're getting those flavors Kind of in the milk. So right, right. once they get older enough to eat, I would just put stuff on their plate. And what they would pick up and eat, they ended up liking. Because this is at nine, ten months. It's not that they're being picky. Right. They weren't, they didn't like some of it. Now, Cannon ended up having acid reflux issues at a really young age. Like, he couldn't. I feel for him because I hated it. Spicy my, stuff man, really just what? fucked him up. So I wasn't going to be making spicy-ass chili and then not make my baby son with no spice. No, that's different, though. So you I got would a change the, like yeah, that. That's yeah, what yeah, I meant. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't just like, you want chicken, you no, want this. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But I would edit it for them. Like, have you Have you noticed that women in the 90s didn't breastfeed? We always on Similac and shit. Yeah. You ain't never seen no '90s titties breastfeed or no eight like late '80s. Yeah, yeah, I, 90s I definitely. Titties, it wasn't 80s. pushed. The we ain't even we ain't even really right. no bre- like to see a white lady breastfeed in public was wild as fuck. Yeah, yeah. but bras went happened. in back then, huh? so the bras went in back then. So the quicker you could dry up your titties, the better. Like well, when you, you was young really in the '80s, when you dry it up. When you, when you was young in the '80s, it was like mohawks, mullets, yeah. no, like you know what I'm saying. Shirts with no bra underneath, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. little titties was in they like that point, like little perky titties and shit so, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's probably why. Like, nah, you ain't gonna fuck my summer up. You gotta dry these titties up. Yeah, probably. Nah, you know, whatever. We just started. Like, I mean, when I did it, I just was like, this is something I want to try. My kid, I didn't get this opportunity to have be breastfed, and I right. always read that they were smarter, so I did it. Yeah, yeah. One about the breastfeeding the trauma arms. No, uh-huh, I wouldn't breastfeed at all. <laughs> Speaking, Speaking, let me know what that is. Look, speaking of titties, uh, Beyonce got a BBL. Um, I don't know, or I, I don't think so, but she looked amazing. Man, beautiful. and her have boobs you seen her? were amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I'll show you. <laughs> I've never seen Beyonce's body look I like that in a Be- picture. I am a Beyonce fan. That's been my crush for the longest, but I don't remember these, son. Where them come from? Oh, you mean titties? You said BBL. Yeah, well, I don't know what BBL no, she, is. A butt, but, butt. But, uh, what is it? Brazilian butt lift. She got a, a B, BBL. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's, you know, after you have kids, and she did breastfeed the twins for a while, maybe she now. Them ain't, them ain't, them ain't kids' titties, though. <laughs> <laughs> them, them, them ain't kids. Yeah, them them stand up when you take the bra off. Them ain't, yeah. I got kids' yeah. titties. I got kids' titties drop down when you take the bra off. She deserves it. Some people got good genetics and they're stay Boy, up. Yeah, I don't remember Beyonce, Beyonce had, ain't never had no titties. Lord help me. I don't remember. But that's you know, but job, titties bro. are fat. They grow with weight. We're not going to, we're not going to spell because she Beyonce. She got a breast job, bro. Th- it just looks so you think natural. So? I mean, I ain't tripping if she do. I mean, yeah, but I need her doctor because they look natural. They she don't look. She a fucking billionaire. What you think the yeah. titties going to look like? That made me nervous about the rest of her body, though. Uh, I got to see her ankles now. It kind of like her ankle going on her shoe a little bit. Thick, sure like I a cankle? Man. Yeah. That's what they say when, you know, it's real. Uh, you so might have the knee to uh, look funny uh, or you got cankle. But I ain't tripping, though, so let me keep quiet because this one day could be my future. You think? This future. Okay, but we ain't. You don't think so? No. Okay, so picture scenario. Walk with me now. No, let's do this real quick before I bring you Let's walk, I'm walk. Just walk with me. Dream with me. She ain't walk, even jiggling. First of all, you're supposed I'm to support my I'm dream. I'm a dream dog. I'm, That's I'm what I'm saying. Go ahead. I don't even like how y'all shot my dream down. Like, bro, you can't. That's get a hell of a dream, bro. I, I, that ain't I even a dream you, at Well, the point. reason I say it is because you already have your your dream girl that you're going to no. get. Yeah, I do. We manifesting that one, yeah. now. Yeah, we do. But let me tell you, though, if Beyonce happened to walk you into that dream, I'm just saying my other dream girl going to have to fight. They're going to have to fade each other because it's going to be, anyway, it's not neither here nor there. So listen, hypothetically, right? I'm doing a lot of shit at a late age, so the podcast get popping, you know what I'm saying? I might be, let's say, 42 at the, at the time, you know, my four or five years or something. You know, I'm a good songwriter, maybe the music popping, you know what I'm saying? Then okay. let's just say hypothetically, you know, I, I'm not in the thing, but you know, sometimes things don't work out. We've right. all seen older people run their course, and then let's say she want to drop an album. She want to feel young again. You might want a younger songwriter in the studio with you. You understand what I'm saying? You don't agree with he this? He ain't going to be 42. Who? The songwriter. What the you mean? The songwriter might be 42. No, but, but if she, I'm younger than her. So if she's 42, I'm not 42. What I'm telling you is that she ain't coming... 
Go ahead. Listen, man. I'm, but you gotta understand also, I got muscles, brother. It'd be fine. When I'm in the studio, when I go in there with her at this ripe age and she is newly single, you seen Jay Z on that on that C do. When <laughs> you seen it. Well, nothing about that, you know what I'm saying, sturdy. And when I get in there and I write this song for her and then, you know, we get the vibe and it's a possibility that I have her at the chicken stand. It's just a possibility. She, she, do, fly like, down here. she do like fried chicken. And that's what I'm going to take I'm going to have her in Pensacola. Stop that shit, bro. What? I'm just sick of it. Don't what's do going it. on? She do love fried chicken. So you're saying this is impossible? Yeah. <laughs> what is impossible about my scenario? She ain't leaving Jay Z, man. I'm not. I don't. I don't want her to leave. I wish everybody had oh, been married. She but gonna cheat? No, no. Listen, I'm. You, it's not hypothetical. I'm just, I don't oh. want. I'm just talking. If if, if something happens, if right. nature, I'm not in their life. I don't know what God got planned for them. But if nature separates them and it ain't in their plans, and she just happened to be back out here, and I'm the new popping face out here in podcast songwriting world, what's happening? Nothing's happening. Why? So let's continue on with our podcast. No, but explain to me why nothing's happened. I got to know as a friend why, because I would never hold on you. If you said SZA was back out here or Rihanna, I would give Beyonce, you a shot. Man. SZA ain't Beyonce. Or Rihanna. Rihanna, no, her either. I would give you, so why can't I have single Beyonce if I'm new and popping? I understand in this current stage I can't have. I don't it got enough you, going on. It's because it's Beyonce. No, 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 no. No, I'm not shitting on him or that. I'm just Yes, saying. he is, though. I'm I need not. to know why I can't have Beyonce. We're going to be stuck on this for a minute. Why can't I have this Listen, if she's man. single? I don't give a fuck how much podcasting we do. That tax bracket ain't you got you had to get yourself she a different job. She don't need money, brother. I understand that. She don't. <laughs> she need a Rubik's cube. She right. need Hulk Hogan. Well if well if she didn't need money, she would be a more she would be with a handsome a more handsome guy than Jay Z. <laughs> no, but that's different though. He was status, he got her on the status level. But My you know, once you've exactly. had that and you back out here, look at Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian. All I have to do is reach Pete, da Pete Davidson's status. I can pull that off. Yeah, but Kim Kardashian ain't Beyonce either, brother. But she's the white version. She's not. She's pretty she's pretty much the white version. She's not the white version. She Kim is Kim, not. Kim Black Kardashian. people have to be extremely She's talented not. to be successful, and Beyonce is beautiful and extremely talented. White people just have to be white and be successful, and Kim Kardashian is the epitome of just being white and successful. Yeah, but she, She's the white Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. If she was a black woman, she wouldn't be close. She's still not close. She's not close, bro. They're not, they don't need, don't even, them folks aren't even the same, shouldn't be mentioned in the same sentence, just Listen, on quality purposes. That's Walmart, Walmart meat and, and Whole Foods meat. Listen, when 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 the podcast get popping, bro, and they come across the ticker somewhere on your phone, Beyonce and Jay Z file for divorce. Just look me in my eyes and know what's about to happen. It's okay though. We gonna give her her first. Nah, you should shoot for the stars. You should shoot for the stars, and I ain't nobody to shit on your dream. Mm. But if I had to bet my last coins, you, you feel me? Right. I'm betting against you. You, you should bet against me in this <laughs> scenario. But in any other scenario, bro, I'm too clever to get around famous women. It's a wrap for a lot of women, though. Do you Baby, get I think I think I'm too, I, I, well, yeah. I will I will give you that though because I feel like I've been I've overachieved in my life. Like if I could really just like openly run down my resume, yeah. people would be like, exactly. bro, what the fuck? But How it's, do, the, and, and, it's the regularness of you though, not right. in the bad way. It's just right. like I'm not when you get around a woman, like especially when you're not trying to be nothing extra, you oh, know what yeah. I'm saying. If you're naturally funny, be you. Right. If you ain't trying to really put on and do nothing extra and cut, like they like but, but, that. But but and and I, I agree with you on that. I will say that um, if you can get in the room with a motherfucker like that and everything, mm -hmm. right, it, it happens because that's how I ended up in my situations, just being the regular guy in the room. And what's funny, I was the regular guy in the room on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and it's just all this star star power around me. Right. And eventually, like it might be something like, can you hand me the remote? And I hand it to him, and it's just like and they I touch block, a yeah, block for a minute, and it's like, yeah, all right, yeah. cool. Hmm. And I, you notice me. Mm -hmm. I just hope you notice me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, I just, I, you notice me, <laughs> and then we keep coming in them same environments, and before you know it, it's from the remote to like, how you doing today? There, there you have it. And before you know it, it's just like, what you do? Yeah. Oh, you actually pretty dope. Yeah, I'm the nigga who wrote that hit for you. And now you're on the grill. You can barbecue. Yeah, it's going to happen, man. Speaking of that, so y'all just took a little glimpse into my future. I am uh, Beyonce's Rebound. I'm her Pete Davidson. Uh, welcome to Anxiety Issues Podcast. I'm Adam 12 Taylor here with my brother Boneface of Boneface Inc. and the talented hairstylist Tania Greedy Monroe. And um, I don't know exactly where to start. A couple things that I do want to address, though. I want to congratulate uh, South Carolina girls basketball team. Uh, pulled off a national championship. Um, and the reason why I peep game on that is because <clears throat> I used to think female basketball was horrendous. I'm not going to lie to you. I used to think it was terrible. I mean, I didn't know why I was on TV. I, I just, I didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? I can admit that. 
But now watching it, though, and I don't know, maybe it's just evolution. Mm -hmm. People get better as the game goes along. Like, female, especially college female basketball, I would rather watch that than uh, men's college basketball. Their style, their effort, the big, the the quote-unquote big girls. You see how skilled they are? Like, it's just dope. Like, their footwork is awesome. So they putting together a great product on the court and it's just awesome to see like yeah, I love seeing they have a lot of female coaches that that do like the coaches we had in high school do they dress up they mm-hmm. wear heels on the side of the, you know what I mean yeah but yeah yeah absolutely cause there was always an oxymoron if you know it was always as if you couldn't be girly and play certain sports especially basketball right but right. That, that's why it's more entertaining now though because girls used to actually play basketball now it used to be a thing to where every basketball team had like two studs and a bunch of girls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's two girls, girls and playing. a bunch of studs. Yeah, so yeah. that's why it's more entertaining because these are women that are raised to do this. Like I've been doing this since Facts. I was a little bit of girl, little bitty girl. When I went to school, it was just like, oh, you like five eleven. You should be on the basketball court, yeah. and they just throw you out there, nah, and you just out there playing. But these are people who played with the boys when they were little. Yeah. Even the little white girls pulling up. I mean, oh, no, stopping pops on the, you. They always can the two yeah. best players in the country are white girls: mm-hmm. UConn's guard the and UConn. our guard. UConn. Have yeah, and yeah. the and the last couple draft picks, first rounds have been white bro, women, and they and they for real with it, like bro. I'm bro, talking they, about step back jays yeah. and all that. But they, like, man, female basketball has always been more fund, fundamentally sound than men, men's basketball. You feel me? Because we had some of them early days, bro. No, bro, it's always <laughs> some been of them early. It's days. always been a even, rough watch. Even if you go back to like. Lisa Leslie and yeah. Sue Bird yeah, and yeah, Diana yeah. Taurasi. Mm-hmm. These people were always more skilled than the men as far as, like, if they had a skills competition, women would win every time because their whole game is centered around fundamentals. There's no dunks. There's right, no right, other right. wild shit you can do to entertain yeah. other than be skilled. There was a little, a, a, yeah, little athleticism skilled. at the right. time, so you had to be skilled. The, like handle, the handle wasn't as skilled as basketball, as men's, like the actual right. the dribbling moves and shit. The handle wasn't the same. But as far as the shooting and the passing and the post moves and shit, yeah. they've always been more superior. Nah, that so that's all they had. But watching this 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 whole um, tournament for the women was like crazy. I yeah, watched, it was. I, I watched, watched them in every game. Facts. I watched yeah, them, bro. Yeah, I actually I actually won a little money on South Carolina <laughs> in the last couple games. Yeah. They 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 cheat code though. When Don Staley got that coaching job, bro. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to her too, man. Seven oh, years, twenty two million dollars. That's a hell of a. Oh, contract. that's what they gave her. Hell yeah. Oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think she just got a bonus for winning the na- national championship. Yeah. So listen, bro, she, get that money, baby. And and when you get coaches like that, though, everybody want to come play for them, so yeah. they're gonna be dominant forever. Like um, Gino, who she just beat for UConn. That's his first time. Ever a legend. Lo- that's mm-hmm. his first time ever losing mm-hmm. in the national championship. Man got eleven titles, bro. Right. Shit is insane. Yeah, they had to mark your corner for yeah. a minute, though. Yeah, that, 10 that or was, 11 titles. But, that was absolutely yeah, But dope. she she, she going to catch him in no time. If you ever see a girl named Liz, uh, I think her name is Elizabeth, but she go by Liz. Cambridge, the the Big one center. Yeah. She played for L.A. Sparks now. 6'9". Like Man, footwork stupid, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and then... Fi- no, you know what? Fuck it. I can say that, man. I'm tired of like not being able to be a heterosexual man. I was almost about to say, let me not say she was nice looking too, because I don't want to, you know. But like a woman can come on here and say something about like Ronaldo or something like that. She can say everything she want to do to Ronaldo, and it's fine. Right. Don't know. She don't even watch a soccer game. Right. right? You can't sexualize her. Though. Right. But I can't sexualize. No, this woman is very, very skilled at what she does. She's an elite athlete, and I would like to fuck her in an authentic playoff jersey. I feel like I should be able to say that. <laughs> Gotta be in the jersey. Yeah, exactly. Gotta be. They yeah, they I, 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 I want yeah, authentic. Jersey. Authentic. I yeah. want to feel as I'm fucking. I want to feel the numbers, the numbers on the jersey. On the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and to make me feel some kind of way. That's not belittling. She's attractive and she's very oh, good at what man. she does. Yeah, exactly. That is a large woman, bro. And usually when women get that large, they start being they like there's like a body dysmorphia. It's like you just big and you like everything and you ain't shaped like. The smaller women, just like if you're a bigger basketball player, like when you get up to, that's why LeBron is so rare because LeBron is has the same build of somebody like six one mm. that's toned and muscular, and you just made him bigger, now. you made him yeah. bigger, and he's still just as fast and still just as strong. So it's just weird because usually when you when players get bigger, they get more bulky and they get slower and they get more right. bad body, bad built. So that's usually, especially in women's basketball, when the, the bigger the woman, the more funny she's shaped. It's rare to see a woman that's curvy and shapely yeah, at shape. six nine, and you just like, damn, she looked like the five eight motherfucker, but six nine. Hey, I role yeah. play with her though. 
We'll play a little one on one. I let her, you know. You thought I, I was for the Dodgers, did huh? You huh? Thought I was to say something to kill myself. No, no, oh, not okay. at all, not at all. Because you know I you gotta be sensitive when you talk about women's bodies. No, 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 no. Because because she, I mean, it, it, I, it's hard pressed to believe that anybody would find her unattractive. Because if I tell you, I, I, if I tell you, bro, I got this chick, boy. She's six nine. What you think she's shaped like in your head? Uh, a pool noodle. <laughs> you know the thing that you beat each other over. With? <laughs> okay, exactly. Yeah. You do not expect her to be no, not like that. that. Deal. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Me and Liz, yes, they, out there, out. They, yes, they out there now. Yes, yes, yes. yes. She better be now. on something because I that that's a good mate. I won't even get in that. That's what I leave alone. But uh, so Kansas won the national championship, also, right? Mm-hmm. Kansas Jayhawks, right? And I'm I'm happy for that only because. I had to root for the white man. <laughs> uh, Hubert Davis. You know who Hubert Davis is? The black head coach mm-hmm. for North Carolina. I, I rooted against him. I don't think he deserves it yet for that bullshit comment he made about his wife is white. Do you remember that comment? He did. And I, I was just, go ahead. I'm going to let you get off. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Well, I don't know what it was. What? I'll play it for you. He was, he was, he was, he's only the fourth head coach in North Carolina history, they right? Co- they coaches come and stay for 30 and 40 years. Okay. Exactly. But he's the fourth head coach in all of sports in North Carolina mm-hmm. that is African American. We all know it's hard for African Americans to get head coaching jobs pretty much in any day. And thing. North Carolina is one that you would have never thought. Facts. Just like Duke is one you never yeah. think. Yes. <laughs> I'll be surprised if I see that one in this lifetime. Coach K was there for like 40 years, bro. You know how Man. crazy that is? And he did a great job. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I would be I surprised if his predecessor is black. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the, of course, if you if you get this black head coaching job, they're going to ask you questions as you're accepting this job. How do you feel oh, about man. being uh, first black coach. Yeah, exactly. And this is what this man said, brother. I forget that I'm African American and I'm the head coach here. Oh, I got the Bluetooth thing still on, so it might have came. Through it's significant that I'm African American and I'm the head coach here. Um, I know that in terms of Division One head coaches all around the country, only 26 percent of the head coaches for Division One men's basketball are compromised by minorities, specifically African Americans. I know that. It is significant that I'm the fourth African-American head coach in any sport in the history of the University of North Carolina. I'm very proud to be African-American, but I'm also very proud that my wife is white, and I'm very proud that... That's enough of that nigga. And he also said, I'm very proud that my kids are a combination of us both. But what the fuck did that have to do with anything? It's because what what, what black people have, have been... Um, condition to do is to own your blackness but make sure everybody else is comfortable in the midst of you owning your blackness. Right. When I say, all right, I'm proud to be black, it has to be a but to make everybody else in the room comfortable when it shouldn't be that way. Right. That's just us pandering to everyone else. Nobody else does that for us. Right. You feel me? But we tend to do that for them, especially when you are the type of guy that he is. Like, this is a guy that gets his razor line done with scissors. <laughs> You feel me? So that tells you everything you need to know right there. So his yeah. whole life has been around trying to make them comfortable and trying to conform. Right. He almost wished he wasn't black, so he didn't have to give that speech. Yeah, so he almost yeah. wished nobody said anything about it. I could agree with You feel with what that. I'm saying? Right. So it's just a situation to where he had to claim it because he is, and he didn't want to make – he was really making that statement to make us feel comfortable. Yeah. He already had – they already felt comfortable with him. Yeah, he didn't want us he to had, be had he, he, he made that statement about being proud to be black. You feel me? And then he had to go back to where he came from and say, I'm proud my wife is white too. Right. Because right, that's right. the side he stands on more than anything. Exactly. You feel me? So he had to get us out the way first and say, yeah, I'm proud to be black. Right. But, bitch, I'm over here. He tried to do what, what what Tiger didn't do when he first came out and was like, I'm Caucasian. So no, Tiger, Tiger Woods. Oh, Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Tiger yeah. Woods stood right over there with them folks. Yeah. He and I know to. I'm saying, yeah, like, yeah. he yeah. tried not to by being like, I'm oh, yeah. the fourth African American. I know the significance. Yeah, I am but, proud to be black. But, but, yeah, but that's, that's somebody who's actually not proud proud right. to be black. They just happen to be black. Oh, yeah. and, 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 oh, I like the way you said that. He's not proud to be black. He just happens to be black. And Hubert Davis, I don't know you, so let me not take away your black card. I cannot take the fact that you are you do happen to be black whether I like it or not whether you like it or not I believe he did that because he didn't want us to make him too black 
That's what he, I'm telling you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. He's in a room with a lot of white people, including his white wife and her white family, and he's achieved probably by being a little bit of soft shoeing and hopping bobbing here and there. You get what I'm saying? It's kind of how you move up the ladder in environments like North Carolina, Duke, and such and such. He right? Have, he wouldn't have gotten that job any other way. In, 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 exactly. Yeah. And the last thing he wanted us to do is to make him too black. What's the nigga who coasted Georgetown? He didn't want us to make us him. Uh, I should know him. I mean, talking about black history, and I forgot the man's name. You know the coach of Georgetown, huh? The big black nigga with the glasses. Oh, yeah. Um, the coach of Iverson Thompson. and all. Yeah, yeah. Thompson, yeah. But he didn't want us to make him him. Right. You get what I'm saying? So he was letting you know, like, yeah, I know the statistics. I know it's John unique Thompson. to be here. But I'm also proud that my wife is white. It's like, my nigga, nobody asked you about your right. wife. And right. I feel like he didn't want to keep hearing that he don't, like, Oh, the first black. Well, he shut that down. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, because because that's not a badge. That's not something he wears as a badge honor. of honor. Right. You feel He's what I'm one saying? of them ones yeah. like I didn't get this just because I was black. I wasn't affirmative action. Like he don't. Right. He don't want to yeah. have to keep. You don't have to always mention. It's He's because, one of those. He's one of those yeah. black people that tell that will tell you that being black doesn't hinder you from having anything in society. Right. Yep. Exactly. He's and one then, of those. Yeah. People. Right. Yeah. Look at all I've achieved. Look at my wife. I've got this. Right. Got this great white job. Yeah. All yeah. that good shit. Yeah. He would. He would. He would never have that job if he was. Um, and what we would call in our world a nigga. He would have never gotten that job if he was a nigga. He had to be a black dude. Right. Yeah, you, can, you can't get a job like that as a nigga. And I don't give a damn how many seasons you played there. Like, it would, it's not going to happen. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of the job that you did do. You did get to the, the final game. You are black nonetheless. I will not ostracize you, but... That weird statement you made, I'm just going to always have a sour taste in my mouth particular. But that's a good transition for me because... Uh, He'll call the cops on you if he caught you like right, walking past oh, the garage. Oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah, He'll ask you what you're doing in this neighborhood. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, do you live out here? But this, is a good, but this is a good thing for white people to understand in general because that we've all seen the aftermath now. It's been some time since the Will Smith slap, right? And you, you see people continuing to talk about it in various ways. And, you know, like now they're pausing some of his Netflix specials. You know what I mean? I think he had some kind of Netflix movie or something, something coming out, right? Uh, another Bad Boys might have been in the works that they're pausing. You know what I mean? So, of course, Hollywood going to get him in line. They got to, you can't fuck up their shit and not. You get what I'm saying? A couple things that's been bothering me, though, is that uh, I watch a lot of podcasts and I watch a lot of comedians, Okay. I kind of pay no mind when black people do it because those are our people. But then I'm watching people like Andrew Schultz and some other comedians going in on Jada, right? They roasting her, going hard on her, right? Because they want to ride for comedians and they're talking about her head and alopecia and they joke. Like, they're comedians. That's what they do. They're roasting her, right? They it's supposed hard. to be a safe space. I don't like it, bro. It's because, and that's, that's why I, I said on the last episode that bitch-ass niggas need to get slapped out more often because what people will do is take something personal and hide it beside, behind something else. Mm -hmm. White people do that to us all the time. You feel me? And I've been in so many situations to where I knew you wanted to do some racist shit, but you couldn't openly do it, so you right. had to do some other shit that I couldn't call you out on mm -hmm. being racist for, so you burying shit. So it's like like they said, an underhanded insult. What is a backhand compliment right, type right. of shit? So it's like with that, it's just like, bro, you can't use... It's like you... Like you said, they, you, you want to be evil as fuck and then say it in the name of comedy. Like, oh, I'm just joking. It's, yeah. People do that shit to you all the time. Right. Like they say, it's truth and jokes. So it's just like if you if you want to say what you want to say, just be man enough to say it. Don't try to hide behind comedy to say some fuck shit. Right. And, and what they're doing to me is this, this is the part that bothers me, though. And I'm specifically, I've seen black comedians do it, but I'm specifically talking about non-black people. And this is what frustrates me about my people. We don't stand together for shit. Mm-mm. We're so easy. We're so divided, right? Some people gonna take Will's side. Some people gonna take uh, Chris Rock's side. Instead of us just taking the black side, you understand what I'm saying? And dealing with it as an isolated incident, making sure other people like the gays. The gays can have an incident, but we better not talk about it. Mm -hmm. The trans can have incidents amongst themselves, but we better not talk about it, right? So I feel like I'm watching them and I'm sitting there. And they joking on Jada. I'm like, bro, what? Why y'all talking about this black woman? No offense. I know you're comedian, but shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Like you, right? It, okay, Chris Rock said it, and it was offensive to her husband. You understand? So what I'm saying, but I'm two think black people, start? right? But but they fine because they not around. They not around. Um, well, they not well. in that stratosphere. But my point is, it's like, hey, bro, you are now roasting, as you say, a black woman. Hey, chill the fuck out, bro. And, and what's wild is though, right? You'll get pushback on that from black people, but in the same breath, we want to say protect black women. Right. Protect all black women or just some? The ones or just the ones you feel like we should protect. Right. 
or do we is is it all of them? Because it should be all of them, right? You feel what I'm saying? And it's just like anything else. Um, when we used to get in a fight in the neighborhood, if one of us you do some fuck shit, right? And somebody hop on you. What the fuck I look like trying to figure out why he hopping on you while we did and he hopping on you. Yeah, this ain't the time. This ain't the time. Right. We get on his ass and when we get home, we figure out why you got hopped on. Right. And I call you a dummy at the house. Yes. But we're not doing it out here. So we have to start facing our issues in the same fashion. When somebody getting on one of us, we all get on their ass as a collective. Then we go back to the black residents right. and we figure out what the fuck your dumb ass did and tell you not to do it again. Because at what point do they understand what's our business and not theirs? You right. get what exactly. I'm saying? This is our business, not yours. It's a difference between you saying something and Chris Rock saying something. Even though Chris Rock said something, it was still black man to black man. This ain't really your... You can talk about it, but this ain't your business to be funny. Like, And then you got motherfuckers saying that, like, I guess, like, oh, well, I can talk about this shit because Jada is who Jada is. And I, and I said on the last podcast, I think Will should leave Jada. She's narcissistic. I've been with a woman like that. He's not going to get nowhere from it, though. You understand what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to make is that Jada sleeping with another man was understood by Will. Mm -hmm. Why did they acting like she did this behind this nigga's back? Right. They had an understanding. But you'll talk shit about that, but your bitch fucking somebody else right now, and they you'll be ready to kill about that bitch, right. and she fucking somebody else right now. You done forgave her from the text messages that you done found her phone that nobody don't know about, the nigga at the gym that she flirt with, the work husband that she eat lunch with, and you'll be ready to uh, like strangle a nigga behind this bitch. Mm -hmm. And Will knew they had a conversation about who she was fucking. Right. So don't say that he shouldn't defend his or feel some kind of way about his. Like, this way of thinking is really, like, blowing my mind when I hear people talk about all this fuck shit. And especially the black angle, bro. Like, we have to start sticking together so much. Like, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Because anybody can talk shit about us. And I can't help but to think we would never, they would, they would never talk about a Jew like this. They would never talk about a gay like this. They would never talk about a fucking trans like this. No matter what situation they had going. If two trans people got up and slapped each, slapped each other, you think they'd be roasted about that shit on other comedy shows? Not a fucking chance. Unless it was a trans comedy show. Oh, exactly. It better be a trans telling the joke. Right. You get right. what I'm saying? So that shit just bothered me, bro. I'm watching these people who are non-black talk shit about Jada, and I'm like, oh, this is offensive to me. Yeah. I think our... Um our ability to be consistent, bro, and our ability ability to forget shit so fast, bro, is what harms us the most. Yeah. Like we our memory is just like, bro, something will happen and next week we on to the next thing. Right. We forgot what we was mad about last week. Yeah. It's like we don't hold on to nothing, bro. Our memory our short term memory is is crazy. So I, j I just I just we ain't gonna never get nowhere until we just start standing on something. We don't stand on shit. And a lot of times we so fake mad, we only mad because somebody told us to be mad. Right. We don't even know if we mad for real. Right. Right. We got to wait on the bitch to tell us we upset. We got to wait on the bitch to tell us whose side we taking. We don't even have an opinion of our own. We can't. We don't have the ability to sit and analyze something and see where it's wrong yet. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? And that's our problem. That's why most people aren't realizing that, bro, like this is an in-house issue that we should be like, no, we could talk about it, but that don't give you a right to talk about it. The only thing we stand on like that is the N-word. And apparently, not all of us stand on yeah, that. But for the most Chris part, Rock. right? Yeah, and yeah. You feel me? Yeah, so exactly. That's yeah, the only yeah. thing we stand on. <laughs> is that Bro. yeah, we the only ones can say that. We should treat everything like the N word when it comes to us. Say is that a two? You got to think. There is a lot, and this is, and I feel like it's always been, and we just don't even call it that. Cap culture when it comes to feelings and what we actually care about. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to say they don't give a fuck about nothing, but that's fucking retarded to do that. Like. If you care about something, you do, and it's okay. Right, and it's okay right, right. if no one understands why you care about it. But everyone wants to think, like, let's say you started a fashion line and we didn't like it. If we didn't want to wear it, we don't have to. We can share it to support you right. and still not buy it because we may not like it for ourselves. That doesn't mean that I can't support you. Right, right. Everyone thinks if you don't full-fledged do it, then you're a hater. Because everyone has this that you can't just be on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. So we don't have comfortable conversations with each other just being like, well, I don't, I don't really like that. Or yeah. I don't really think that's cool. I mean, but I still fuck with you. Right. I just, I right. ain't fucking with it. Or, 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 or just shut the fuck up. That's that's the that's the remedy for anything. If you're doing, if you're doing something that I don't like or approve of as a black person, mm -hmm. I should just not have an opinion. If, like they say, no, like, like your folks say, if but you ain't got I'm nothing saying, good to say, 
don't say nothing at I'm all. I'm saying when you were saying like you know how people don't care, they move on so quickly. Yeah, no, I it's agree with that. Because no one's that. really caring for it. It's right. all so fake right, right, that right, you right. can move on quickly. Right. See, most people really do feel some way when you say nigga. That's why we can't move on quickly from that because right. we feel some type of way. But because of everything else, we don't want to feel no type of yeah. way, and we don't. And, wanna, I, and I don't even think we feel no type of way on that. It's just we were told to feel, feel some, some type of way. way. But really so for don't. so long that it yeah. was consistently right, right. Itch. So right. yeah, so it's like yeah. you just grabbed on. We grab on. We grab on to so much shit that we don't understand. Yeah. From from words to religion to culture, we grab grab on to shit that we don't understand. We just grab on to it because we don't have anything else to hold on to. Right. Like we don't know how to in 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 our in in life and everything. It's just like. We don't know how to let go of one thing without grabbing on to something else. Yeah. You feel me? If we let go of Christianity, we got to grab on to being a Muslim or we got to grab on to being in something else. You feel yeah. me? We don't know how to just sit and not hold on to anything and analyze what makes sense that. for us. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's the issue. And um, when I was saying as far as sometimes we just got to be quiet, I wasn't saying that in reference to what you were saying. I was just saying that oh, in yeah. general. Yeah. That were like, like, bro, like, that's how you, like, if, you, if I'm not going to, like do anything positive towards what you're doing. I'm just not going to do anything right. else right. at all. Our issue is that if we don't support it, we got to do, we got to send negative energy towards it. We got to put negative motion in, on it because we don't support it or we right. don't fuck with it. And that's not how it works in other cultures. Sometimes bro, you just got to sit back. If something ain't for you, just don't say nothing. You feel me? That's why a lot of times I'm learning to where if I, somebody asks me my opinion about something like you and I can have a private conversation I tell you exactly how the fuck I feel, mm -hmm. but when we get on this air and you just like you like Buddy L, I'm gonna just be like, you feel me? I ain't, I'm, I'm be act like I ain't heard that motherfucker. If I ain't got nothing good to say about it, I might act like I ain't heard them about it. You but why? Do, but why do we have to be like that? It's black, like That's that thin I'm line is black people. It's like if I don't, if I don't like some, I'm hating. Like nah, bro, I just That's don't like it. No, like, no, 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 no. Like, why it, can't it, I say like nah? That's not for me. I don't like that. Or I ain't, you and know, that, I ain't but feeling that, that. But that's also not bashing it either. Right. right. That's just telling, like, it ain't for me. Like, I, you feel me? It's a different, it's like you say, bro, you like cheese grits. And I'm like, man, no, fuck them fuck ass cheese grits, man. I ain't, right. I ain't even on that. I like oatmeal. And you just, yes. you doing the that, most bro, now. You got to get cheese what, grits. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Like, you, we don't have to do all that, bro. It's okay right. to not like something and not be a hater. It's just our issue in our culture is when we don't like something, we got to start a campaign against it. Yeah. And that's not, that's, that's, that's whack to me. That's whack to me. And I just, and it, because because what we have to understand, bro, is there's a song on the radio that every one of us hates, but somebody else loves it. Yeah. You feel me? Everything ain't for you. Dancery by uh, fucking uh, Mary J. Plies. It I wasn't, hate that right, shit. Right. It wasn't for you. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? But somebody loved it. But the girls yeah. who got yeah. it. <laughs> nah, yeah. We'll watch somebody love some shit we don't like and be in the corner mad as fuck that they I love it. Yeah. I kind of be mad when the club go up with that. Come on, though. Yeah, if nah. I see people dancing, I want to stop like, everybody. I want to go grab and sit down. Yeah, you got a little bit out of that you did. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. Like, I just, that, that bothers me. But I don't. You know, uh, this is going to, hopefully it smooths over over some time. They're about to do a red table talk, which is, uh, I, I don't agree with that either, but, you know, I can't tell them what to so do. So was just, her statement real that she released, or was that I fake? Don't, I don't know if that's a real statement. You know, it's so hard because everybody looking to make a fake right. post. Right, that's like, why I right. was just like, mm. So I'm not sure, but I doubt it was real because if they're going to do a red table talk, then they probably release everything on something that they can profit off of. Yeah. So which I understand that. From the profit standpoint, but it's like, damn, do you got to do a red table talk? Like, she can does. you just shut the fuck up on this one? Like, y'all yeah. should just be sitting, like, you know what I mean? That's why I don't they think this Jay -Z is. and Beyonce but it. Listen, this is why I don't think this is. We trying to, we, everybody trying to get in Will's head and Chris Rock's head and, and you know, talk about uh, the psychology of Chris Rock being bullied and oh my God. Not like, man, man, listen, these niggas is 50, bro. These are two 50-year-old niggas, man. That man, Chris Rock, been rich for a long fucking time now. That man ain't worried about being fucking bullied at 50 fucking years old in a room full of other rich fucking people, bro. Half life. Right. Man. You you a fucking comedian. What? You come out to roast people, bro. You are, you have confidence in your craft and all of that shit. This is not middle school. You getting stuffed in trash cans. At the end of the day, it could just be two people who had a problem. Maybe this ain't a mental break from Will. Maybe this ain't got nothing to do with no fucking entanglements. Bro, I was just hot tonight. Maybe I had a conversation with you, bro. I'm just hot tonight. Stop trying to make this shit deeper than what the fuck it is. Because what a lot of people don't understand and also is that you can say it, was, uh, it wasn't about the 2016 thing, but understand the different projection between Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle. Chris Rock was black, black when he first came out. For people who don't know what black, black is, that's black in skin color and black in culture. You yeah. get what I'm saying? He's from this side, yeah. Right. He had legendary black roles such as Pookie. You can't forget that, can you? You get what I'm saying? New Jack said he was black, black. 
But then as his comedy evolved, as his success, ha success happened, you'd be hard-pressed to say that he's not a white comedian at this point. Would you, If you went to a Chris Rock show, who do you think would mostly be in his audience? Yeah, White people. You get what I'm saying? His takes about stuff that's happened when it comes to black matters, when it comes to protests, when it comes to sitting around Louis C.K., when it comes to going safe. to the... They're always safe, right? Now you can look at a person like Dave Chappelle who came out as a black but white, white comedian. His movie roles, his comedy was predominantly white. You get what I'm he saying? He would slide his stuff in there, but it would be so... You no, when he first came out, he didn't slide nothing didn't in there. He was white. Nothing. That yeah. nigga half-baked and all that shit, that's white. You might appreciate it if he was a nigga who got high because you thought it was funny. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I was, yeah. like, I was like, well, my but favorite. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's not but many niggas that hang out with comedy, three white boys yeah. all day mm. and smoke weed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was pure white boy energy he was giving out. Yeah. But as the times change and things begin to get more uh, 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 race-centric in today's society, his takes and his comedy showed you what he was truly about. Yeah. And a lot of people see Dave Chappelle, who was a long time a black, white comedian, as black, black. Now, he speaks for us, and we let him have it. Hey, go ahead, hear what Dave yeah. said. All right. You get what I'm saying? So you have to understand sometimes why a black person might have a disdain for another black person because we feel like you're not of the culture or you don't understand. When I saw that, all I saw was a cultural moment. We yeah. we love to say we know Will Smith and he's been this perfect whatever. You don't know who the fuck Will Smith is. Right. Mm -hmm. Will Smith has said out of his own we mouth know the in another. Roles he's played. Right. He said out of his mouth in another interview that like, I have to be this way, but I wish I could slap the shit out of people. He literally said that. You feel me? So this was just a, like when he said, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Did that sound like a, a movie role or mm -hmm. did that sound like the Fresh Prince? That was a nigga moment. And he wanted him to understand that, bro. Just keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I done probably told you before. Yeah. So that's all. Like, like, stop trying to make this shit about him being bullied or Will going through a mental break. Bro, them boys just had a moment. The end. I wish they didn't go do it on the red table talk and discuss this, but Jada is... Sometimes the wicked witch from the West. Yeah. And but. sometimes sometimes we what we got to learn how to do as black people, too, is take these isolated um, incidents and generalize them and, and, and find the overall um, lesson in them. You feel me? Because every time something happens, we like to um, pin it on just those two people it happened with versus, like, breaking it down and, like you just did, break it right, down right. and trying to figure out, like, what the root of everything is and how, how we could use that shit in other situations. You feel what I'm saying? Right. If that make any sense. Nah, it makes plenty of sense. But yeah, so uh, you know how I said I wanted to do the anonymous anxiety thing, right? Okay, cool. So I got three of them in my DMs. I got three. So I picked one that was that I thought that was good, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. I probably should have not drank before I, uh, you drank? I went to public school. So I don't know how my reading going to be. Uh, like in school, I used to read ahead, you know, when they knew the line oh, was coming. <laughs> gosh. That's how I, that's how I read. Okay, so anonymous anxiety, for those who don't know, is people submitting any kind of issue. It could be your <clears throat> your relationship issue. It could be a uh, issue with a friend. It could be an issue, issue with a co-worker family. It really doesn't matter. And uh, we'll try to help you and give you some neutral advice so you can figure out what to do. And we'll leave out names. And whatever information you give us, we'll talk about, but we'll leave out all the personal stuff, right? <clears throat> so here we go. It says, Two Anxiety Issues Podcast. My wife and I are both 32 years old. We've been married for about five years now, and so far, so good. We do not have problems with infidelity, nor do we have a marriage that is plagued by trust issues. But there is a reoccurring question that has caused problems as of late. My wife is a manager at a bank. And I have been self-employed for the past 10 years buying and flipping houses. I am well into the six figures annually. Make my own hours and love what I do for a living. But my wife is growing increasingly tired of work and a strict schedule, dealing with co-workers and being underpaid. She's been asking me for the past two years to join my real estate slash construction business. How do I tell her that's a big no for me? Although I love my wife, our personalities are polar opposites, which makes for a great relationship because I am Mr. All About Business and she is the life of the party, always searching for a good time. So although I appreciate the balance she brings to my social life, she is not the ideal person I would do business with nor employ. I also get the feeling she wants to be more of an equal in my business rather than an employee. 
How do I let her down easy? What should I do? Or should I allow her into a business I've spent decades building or risk losing the company and marriage if it fails? Please help. This is giving me anxiety. That LOL. Is a, that is a real good question. I mean, that is you so. Me, you going first? No, you, you. I, <laughs> uh, you got I think this is a man question. It definitely. I mean. Um, <clears throat> I've worked with a significant other and it ruined our relationship. Um, two people who are in a, a committed relationship that live together and spend um, most of their time together should never work. There has to be a balance. There has to be some separation. Um, it's not good if I got to go to work with you and come home to you too. Mm -hmm. That's a field. Brother, I don't give a damn if you're good at what you do and our personalities do match. We need space from each other. Right. It's necessary. That's why um, relationships used to last so long back in the day because your, your, your grandfather would go to work and all day long your grandmother had no way to communicate with him or mm -hmm. contact him. Right, you feel right. me? And when he came home, she was happy to see him. He was happy to see her. That was the space they needed. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And you need that in a relationship. You have to have space. You have to have room to breathe, and you have to have room to miss each other. Like if I told, if you told me your favorite food, right, and I had a master chef come in and prepare that same food for you every day, every day, before you know it, that favorite food would be your least least favorite food. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just like you have to have a break from the <clears> things <throat> that you enjoy the most sometimes to keep enjoying them. So you need space in your relationship. And I would explain, I wouldn't even go as far as to talking about the business side of it because what you don't want to do is make her feel like she's less capable or like she's going to be a hindrance to your business. You just go more so and focus on the personal side and the relationship side of it and how you need your space and you want to keep that space. Oh, okay. So you're saying address it. Address it from that, that way, that way of versus saying that you're not going to be good for business or it may not work or I don't want to risk losing my company. Leave all that to the side. Just talk about the, because you are married and you are in a relationship. Just make her understand that you don't want to be tied to each other at the hip 24 seven. You need your space from her and she needs her space from you. Right. And if she doesn't think she does, she'll find out soon when she starts working with you. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Especially if you already can barely tolerate each other at the house, which is right. the case in a lot of situations. Yeah. So um, don't put that strain on yourself for having to work with somebody that you love unless that's just the way y'all started. Now, if you were someone who went into a company and you met this woman and y'all were working together and y'all have always worked together right, and y'all have right. always been together, maybe that'll work. Because I have a homie that um, who's a tattoo artist. Wife's never, wife never leaves his side. How he does it? She's a, she's a tattoo artist as no, well? No, she's his assistant. She oh, okay. books for him, but everywhere he goes, she goes. She works in the shop with him every day. They live together. Right. How he does it, I don't fucking know. But it would drive me nuts. Yeah. It would drive me insane. It would drive me insane because I don't want to be attached to my fucking children 24-7, and I love them too. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. most people would like, like that space. Yeah, we like, need space. Mm -hmm. Everybody, and that's, that, like, that's why learning to be alone is so dangerous. Because once you learn to be alone, you don't want any you don't want anybody in your presence anymore. Because you learn what peace of mind is. Like you're usually not gonna disrupt your own peace. Right. You feel me? It's always gonna be somebody else on the outside of that. Usually. True. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Or or you allow somebody to become your peace, and now their absence or presence is altering how you feel. You feel me? But when you learn how to be in your own space, it's dangerous, bro. But I, you definitely need your own space, and like when I, I already know when I when I get to a space to where I want to live with a woman again, I'm gonna have my own part of the house. I damn near want one of them little walkways to go across in between. Yeah, man, yeah. give me one of them. I'm gonna need one of them. That's where I'm at with it. But you can give your take on it. Now I want to hear the ladies' take on it. Okay, so you're gonna be surprised. I pretty much I agree with every single thing he said from but from this side of it I know women are going to be like this bitch but so I have a business and I was married and um yeah I definitely didn't want my partner a part of it mm -hmm. I ugh, I hate that. transparency ma'am yeah yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you swallowing it, but go ahead, let, let it. <laughs> I got my business, and um, we was we were married, but I purposely didn't change my last name for like three years, mm -hmm. two years, because I wanted my business in my name, and I wanted it to be mine forever. Right. And I didn't want any, no one a part of it. Right. 
And I am extremely happy and proud of myself that I did because it's mine. So for one, anything that's a mistake, it's on me. For two, um, there's just certain ways that situations like he wanted to handle. And I'm happy that it wasn't like a partnership because it's not how I wanted it handled. Mm -hmm. And it's not Mm -hmm. how I wanted it addressed in any way. And it was it wasn't things I wanted to do for my business or represent, and I didn't want any suggestions. And I felt like if I would have been allowing help, then I would be having to take suggestions. Mm. Um, I could not work with a partner, absolutely fucking not. We need a break. I can't be around like he like he said the kid part. I love my kids, I definitely do, but they have another parent too, and I do like my space, and wow. I definitely. Um, I think the woman, I don't know why she would want to do that because. Well, he just, tells you why. He, she, she's tired of her job. I mean, job. I was going to say, but right. still, I would have asked for something like, can I just not work, babe? Or can I get like a little job I like that don't make a lot of money? Something yeah, like I still contribute. He also said that she probably, she don't, she don't want to sit still either. Um, another thing though, um, a big, another issue with that would be for me, I feel like, when he said she wants to be an equal in his business. That's what I'm... That's right. But this is the issue with that is that the one person who... The person who respects your power the least is always going to be your woman. Exactly. Yeah. Especially yeah. on the job. Yeah. Especially yeah. on the job. That's why That's why you can't hire friends and family because yeah. they don't respect your power. Same yeah. thing we talked about earlier. LeBron can't hire his son. His son sees him as dad. Right. It's not going to function like the rest of the employees. But that's what I was saying is like... Why? In her mind, I don't think she's thinking like that. Like, she's just thinking, I want to work with him. It's going to be... Because she can't be. Like, you got to think some of the things that y'all get into it at home about, now you still got to see him, you're going to be mad. Or you're going to try to control it the same way there. And then if he talks to you a certain way, you're going to feel like he's disrespecting you in it's, front of e- people. It's even, just like, that's too much. And even if she's the most peaceful employee, what's going to happen is because, like she, like he said, your wife feels like she's your equal yeah. most of the time. And most of the time in, in happy marriages, the wife usually feels like she runs right. you. Mm-hmm. So she's going to come to your company. She's going to start making suggestions that you don't want to listen to. She's going to start, you feel me? It's just like she's going to impose her will on your shit. And if you don't yep. treat her like an equal, then you have an issue in your marriage now. Do you think he's unfairly judging his wife though? No. So his his one of his issues, well, the biggest issue is just personality wise. Right. You know, like sometimes someone can see you in a certain light, and yeah. I can't shake you out of that light. Now, mm-hmm. that could be. You get what I'm saying? Like there are some people who view me who've always known me to be funny, or they they know me to be the music guy, right? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't know how intelligent I was unless you sat with me and had an mm-hmm. intelligent conversation. Or some people see our exteriors like that, even being black. You see the clothes I wear. I had a professor that told me one time after we had to present this project, we had to talk for 30 minutes in the class, right? And my whole fucking team was unprepared. And I went in there and murdered that shit for everybody, right? And he, he stopped me out the class and he said something to me that was racist, that I was offended by. But I later got what he was saying, even though it was still racist. He said, if you stop wearing your NBA clothes, people will take you more serious. That's exactly what that man told me, Mm -hmm. right? So sometimes people put you in a box because of whatever your perception is. Mm -hmm. So is it because the the fun-loving party girl that he loves so much, he can't see her doing business? No, what it is is that that professor didn't know you, and that professor Mm -hmm. hadn't spent time around you to know your patterns. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So what happens is after that, after you did what you did, that professor treated you differently the entire time. Probably yeah, that's true too. So yeah, the yeah. difference with him and his he wife is her. he knows his wife, he knows her <laughs> he patterns, knows and you can almost just like you know how your daughter is going to react in a situation she's never been in before she gets in it because you know your daughter, just how you know how your old lady is. You know how you know what not to bring up and have a conversation with her about because you already know how it's going to end. Okay, you already know where it's going to lead to. It's because you've done it and. In different yeah. ways, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like it, it doesn't. Things don't have to happen the exact way for me to know what the result is going to be. And I will say this though: I um, I said this on the podcast before. Um, we do have to start giving each other a chance. You feel me? <laughs> right. We have yeah. to give each other a chance to mm-hmm. to fucking fail. You feel me? A chance to to um to prove uh, prove me wrong. You feel me? Because I'm I. Women do it to me all the time, make a decision for me based on how they think I'm going to react or not tell me something based on how I think I'm going to react. And I always say, you should have told me and gave me that chance. Mm -hmm. But I understand you can't take that risk with your business to say, well, let me hire and see how it go. Because everything may crash. So it's just, that's not one of those things you can, you can just. 
What was the job? He's a realtor. He or he he, a, he buys and, and he, he flips home. So he'll buy. Uh, I guess because he said uh, real estate slash construction. So in my mind, he's probably buying homes and then tearing them down, mm-hmm. fixing them up. But and there reselling. is a face part of it, like a, a part that she could probably do well if she's like a life of a party. Mm-hmm. She could make lots of potential clients. She could be like the real estate agent, right? So there. maybe that's what she's thinking. And maybe he should word it in that way, like, and yeah. not, you're the life of the party. I don't think that you could do the yeah. selling part. I don't, like, as far well, as I, the financials. I think, I think he's more just, I think he's just more um, concerned about, um, from his message, it sounds like he's more concerned about um, her respect for what he does and his her respect for his position, his authority. Mm. He just understands that he's not going to have the authority he would like to have over her without it. But he did say that her personality was not the type that he would like to do business with (laughs) nor employ. Right. I think that uh, because he was very specific about how much money he made and how long he's built this business. Have you ever seen a successful man? Oh, okay. Put it this way. I I want to become a successful entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. I went to college or either had a job all my life or done some illegal shit. None of those are suitable for me. You understand? Mm -hmm. I want to be a successful entrepreneur. Also... I want to be a man whose wife does not have to work unless she chooses to, right? So when you take a couple things off the table, if I'm a successful, hardworking man, the man I see in my mind, right, the the opposite things that I need on the other side of that are attractiveness, probably the life of the party, the fun. You know, a lot of these successful men end up with these party girls because they're the they're the po- they're the exact opposite of what their mm-hmm. daily life is like. Right. Mm-hmm. I need someone to loosen me up. I need when I come home, I want the wife that's probably already half drunk by the time I get there. I just need to catch up because that pussy been warming up right. all day. Yeah. You feel me? She on her third sangria. Yeah. Cause she has shit to do all day. You get what I'm saying? So I picture her being like that. He probably doesn't take her seriously mentally. Yeah. She's a party girl. And now here I am. Right. And on top yeah. of that, it's just like I didn't marry you for you to be in business with me. I, yeah. married, I married you to do exactly what you're doing. And if you want to go have a job, go have whatever job you want on your own type time. But right. I don't want you interfering with what I got going on because clearly whatever he built seems like he built it on his own. On his own, yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I don't need your assistance in helping me maintain something I build on my own, built on my own. And right. that, that may come across as insulting to his wife a little bit, but it's like it's – the reality. And it is. And it's yes, like, like it I mean, so how, I think that's a that's a business owner thing, I, I would say, because, like, I, I felt, you know, particular about that. And I and I wanted to be able to keep it and not have to yeah. have to So you, nev- you never had to have that conversation with your then yeah, husband? No, I did. Like, it was like, it would be stuff like um, if I needed to call to have stuff, like, fixed and I wasn't handling it in a way he thought I should. And I'm just like, it don't matter. It's not yours. Just chill out. Yeah. Did, did he ever want to be a part, yeah. like on the bit? And yeah. how did you separate? How did you let him know I that this is not? I just, I said I didn't want to. I got it on my. I, I but you got to understand, like he says, I'm mean in how I talk. So mm. th- you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I would be like, I didn't want to. Like, I don't want to. And I, I think I, cr- I started crying maybe, and I don't cry. So it was like, oh, you're, you're serious. Well, that's like, a good term. Yeah. He can yeah. cry. That might yeah. work. And, and, that, and that's what I was gonna say. Is like, it, it's not all about really. Um, like when you're married, sometimes you gotta um, fabricate a little bit. It's not all about being um, honest. It's about doing the shit in a peaceful manner. That's right. why I said let's not even talk about the business side of it because it's hard to do that in a peaceful manner. But it's easy to say like, "Hey, I to to make it." And he you just have to, to help me. The psychology because. side of it, like I said, is just like to make her feel more so that it's a situation about where space. like I want to maintain the peace in our relationship. Right. It's not about the job or if you could do it or not. I'm mm-hmm. sure you are highly intelligent. I have a bunch of dummies that work for me that you could probably do their job. Right. But guess what? I, I prefer it, us to keep our space so that way I can appreciate you as my wife and my life partner, not my business partner. That's that not what I got into be, this for. Yeah. No, I respect that. Yeah, I, well, my right. feelings wouldn't be hurt that way. Yeah. It the, sounds like it's because I am still a girl, so I, I'm imagining her part. Yeah. Like, I only feel like this because yeah, I own you're the too business. good for this shit, baby. Yeah. Like, you don't need but, to like, yeah, saying it like that good. makes it yeah. seem more like you're right because then you're gonna be telling me what to do. Like, you know, she'll start to think about what is actually gonna like. You know, how I, I my one job I worked for a family and it was my uncle, and mm-hmm. I thought it was gonna be easier. So, he treated me worse, it was like. No, you represent this shit. That's so the fuck Adam no. Taylor version of what I was gonna say. Do okay. 
So my thing it is, it was so hard because I, quit. I don't believe that conversation is gonna go well. It's he, he seems to be very. He seems to have shaken it off several times because he said this has been a reoccurring question and it's starting to cause an issue, right? So what I say do two parts. You know, one being the typical me. What I would do is I would bring her on as an equal though. But I would create a job environment that's not the typical job. I did. I quit in a month. But, like, listen, I used to work <laughs> offshore. So people thought that that was, you know, this because of my paychecks that I just hard ass work. And at times it was. You have to know what the fuck you're doing, especially when you're an engineer or whatever, right? But some days we got up and we played cards all day and we watched TV. Like, nobody knew what the environment really fucking was. So she doesn't know what he has to do all day. You get what I'm saying? So I'll be like, all right, come on, give it a shot. But I will let my guys know for this week, we putting on for the city. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to make her carry sheetrock and all kind of shit. Like, I need you to get down here with this jackhammer and <laughs> break all this shit. I have her in there doing everything and I'll be side by side. Like, you good, baby? Glasses shaking off her motherfucking face and everything. I would quit that day. Listen, exactly. Bitch, you got me fucked. And I'll be like, nah, baby, we'll t- this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is every day. And if she make it, to yeah. me, that would be like, well, all right, well, shit. Because you doing was, some shit was, we don't even yeah, do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to shake you up and you ready to go back to work. Then, That's okay. Smart. Or you just walk off. That's how I would set it up. Or I would just, she's clearly just doesn't like her job. She Definitely. probably sees your income. You make your own hours. You know, I, 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 I imagine if she gets out of bed every day at seven and you just kind of making it up as you go, you know, that would bother the woman a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this nigga made more money than me. He's right. what the fuck you want to do. That's I got to answer this fuck. Yeah, that, that creates <laughs> exactly. resentment. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe you could figure out something that she's good at on her own, even if it's a... You ever seen like some pe- sometimes like r- successful people make businesses that they know gonna fail just for tax write offs. You get what I'm saying? So oh. even if it's not a successful venture, maybe just give her something that she could just try on her own and invest in her and give her some freedom to do some things. You get what I'm that's saying? Good, and maybe she did that's, that's a good that's a good answer. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, just ask her what she wants to do. Right. Like I understand that you do the, like you do this and you don't want to do this and you try to do what I do or create her uh, create her her own branch mm-hmm. of what you do. Right, right. Like, let help her create her own real estate shit so she can fail on her own if you feel like she's going to crash and burn. Yeah. And maybe she'll surprise you. Or maybe she won't. But like you say, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, you write it off. And maybe she got, like, a pension she can take out since she had, like, a good job. You know, she, it says she had a good job. Yeah. Well, so he said she, she was a, a manager at a bank. Mm-hmm. See, she probably got some money she could take out when she leaves and start yeah. up something. Yeah, or find something she can do with her skill set. So our two solutions for this gentleman would be to either have the conversation and make it as if it's not about the personality mm-hmm. or anything. It's just that I like my space and I don't want right. to kind of burn out. Or if you want to simplify it, just tell her, you know, um, you're too good for that shit. I see I see more for you than working for me or with me. I feel like you should be doing something that's well beyond what I'm doing because you're smarter than me and you're more ambitious than me. Just big her up. Make her seem like she's too yeah. good for what the fuck you do and give her something else to do that seems like it's better than what you do. Well, yeah, yeah. I support, or you know, either find out what she loves to do, and yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I think I think we helped out our first person on our first and nine. That was a good one. As I was reading, but I was like, don't, yeah, he wrote this pretty damn good. I understand he, you, what he's going through. Or you could always give her that letter. I mean, it, it, it give take her out that letter. Well, like no, what he wrote you, but That's take out advice. some of the stuff. Yeah, don't don't give her that. <laughs> she don't need to see what he wrote. No, no, that man. So he, she is not the person I would do business with, nor no. employ. I was no. like, damn, brother, what the fuck you mean? Yeah, she why? Like, but I understand that though. We got All another right. one, huh? We got another one. Oh, that was it. No, that was it. And then last thing we'll talk about, we can close early. We're gonna have to do a two hour joint tonight. Uh, but there is a, a Rob Kardashian in Black China little ordeal. I don't know if you've seen uh. China say she don't get no child support and she had to let go three cars and you know times hard as a single mother. And do you have a take on that just on the surface level? Well, I knew you had one. Being that the next two comments said one from Rob Kardashian, well I pay thirty seven thousand a month in my daughter's day or schooling and I have her Tuesday through Saturday. Right. Which I can see that because he has nothing to do. Why would I pay child support? Yeah. LOL. Rob does nothing. He doesn't do the show. He doesn't have any obligations. I can see him having his child he from Tuesday to Saturday. He's depressed and you know that was like the only thing in life that he got excited about. So right. yes. And then there's Tyga who follows up with well I pay 40k in tuition for my kid and have him Monday through Saturday so why would I pay anything? LOL. 
Yeah. Both of your baby daddies said that they have their children the whole week. You have one child one day, and then the other one you have two days. Mm. So for two days you have kids. And you said you need child support for three cars? Right. Girl, bye. For real. And supposedly she made, uh, what was it, uh, 20 million? Was that it? I don't yeah. want to say it wrong. Or was 10 it million? On, 20 million or some shit pants. like that. Yeah, she had it was something fucking ridiculous she made on. Yeah, 20 million per month on OnlyFans. 20 million a month and on OnlyFans. And now she's suing supposedly three of the Kardashians. But you know how long that's been going on? There's no way I'm making no fucking 20 million on no goddamn OnlyFans they, no per month. They, they swear they had her listed as one of the top owners on yeah. Yeah. I call Cap too because that's a shit ton of money. But who am I to tell? And man, why you got to give up all your car? Where's your money but going? It was a lot of horny niggas in the pandemic. It might have been twenty million dollars worth of jack offs in the pandemic. Cap. I mean, yeah, I call Cap too. But um, Chloe want them statements though. You know they going to court, right? Mm-hmm. So in twenty sixteen, you know, her and Rob start dating in January. Then they end up announcing an engagement three months later, and that she was pregnant. And they started a reality show that December, right? Mm-hmm. Then I guess the show did fairly well, so they renewed for a second season. But then before the second season aired, they announced the breakup, and Black China sued the Kardashians saying that they blocked their next season and they blocked her reality show and all this money that she was going to get. But that shit had kind of went under the radar for a while, and I guess now it's queued back up. Uh-huh. Like she's re-suing them now because of for okay. lost wages and all this other stuff. So Chloe, like, all right, bitch, submit them OnlyFans uh, finances then. Since you say you lost money and you can't whatever, and Black China don't want to release that shit supposedly, oh. so I don't know what all this has to do with anything. I just it just it, it it just bothered me from the child support aspect. I don't really care about the Kardashians or the baby mama baby daddy drama. It's just that baby don't go on the internet talking about you don't get that's no child what, support. Both your baby daddies you rich. You don't have them. You ain't yes. Cut it out. You didn't have to give up three cars to take care of your fucking child. And she kept saying, "I'm a single mama." I'm like, "A what?" Right. Like, that's the only part that bothered me. You just was in the pandemic talking about you was making 20 M's a month. Now, all of a sudden, you got to give up cars. If you if, if you do have to go through all that, it's because of your poor financial choices and not the fact that you need more money from your baby daddies. Like, that's the shit. Like, you know, I think the child support system is broken in general, so. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I just wanted to bring that up. I didn't have nothing to go with that. I just wanted to make light of that. I just I thought, thought it was, was wild bullshit. when I seen it that I was like, hold on, two days a week? Right. And you want what? Which was so believable because, like I said, Rob does nothing. I, I can see him having, he doesn't make public appearances. You don't see him nowhere. He's not really a part of run, like running around like with the Kardashian brand. So I can see him having his kids majority of the time. So you yeah. tell me this woman made $240 million on OnlyFans <clears throat> in a year. That's what they say she made. I, I, listen, like literally, they're, they're, they so got. She might, so she made more money than Jay Z last year. <laughs> Jay Z don't got no titty. She gonna have to show. She made more money than Beyonce she, last year. If she and Rihanna. Yes, support. And and Kim. Kim didn't make two forty last year. They probably made somewhere close to it. No. I, listen, I don't know, but all I know is when the Kim reports came, barely worth two forty. When the, the time I made two forty in the when years. The, when the reports came out, bro, they put. They put Black China as number one on this list. I'm looking at it right now. You remember Bella Thorne was on that list. She pulled that bullshit off the actress. Uh-huh. She went on there and J-faked everybody. Like, she went on there and act like she was going to do news and made that million dollars in a day real fast. And it come to find out it was bullshit. So they got Black China, Bella Thorne, Cardi B, Tiger, Mia Khalifa, who was a porn star. and Tiger they, on OnlyFans, too? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tiger was showing whole meat on that bit. Tiger was on there bucking. So during the pandemic, wasn't no shows, man. Them folks had running that check up. I guess a lot of girls want to see that tiger meat. I need to go fuck on OnlyFans. <laughs> you might make you some bread, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, kid. real shit. And I said tiger was on there. <laughs> real shit. And he we'll turn up man. one time. Made him a nice little. But hey, I, I just think the child support system is broken. Uh, yeah, uh, that's right, wild. Nigga out here with morals and shit, not making no money. You don't get nowhere with morals, not in this world we live in. No, yeah. Holly Berry said the child support system is extortion. She said it's most parents use it to live a lifestyle that they cannot afford themselves. Yeah, didn't her husband get child support against her? He 16, took... 16000 a month. Yeah, took the kid, yeah. Well, that was a good net, wasn't it? But, <laughs> but listen, if I could ever I catch... it deep. Well, listen, if I could ever... <laughs> Deep. Ain't nothing coming out, huh? We're going to sit there and Man, talk for a little while. Deep like a dog. You know how they stay yes, lights on for exactly. a 
Yeah. Big pink thing staying in there. Right. That dick gonna get soft separate in the pussy. Yeah, mm-hmm. they gotta separate us. Now that just your bitch you can have to flop out. <laughs> yeah. It's just done. Nah, I left that bitch in the whole time. Yeah, I'm talking about goddamn whatever position to make it flow backwards. But 16K a month, you goddamn right. And I'm gonna love the shit out of my child. She'll be all right. 16K, I'm good, daddy. Man. But yeah, that's all I got for y'all tonight, man. Y'all good? Yeah, man. I'm good. But it's, yeah, yeah, man. So this was a short daddy, man. Normally we go two hours and something, though, but it's late. Uh, so hopefully we helped out our first anonymous anxiety. I think that was dope. I, uh, I, I really want to um, no let's happens. let's start starting the show with those. I okay. think that's a good way to start the show because we spend a lot of time starting the show with a whole lot of fucking air. Yeah, just wasting yeah. time. I think, and that'll that'll force people to tune in a little earlier too because. They want to hear the anonymous anxiety, especially people who write the anonymous anxiety. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think that's something to segue well off of and pig, piggyback off of, and it'll kind of because that is, it creates discussion. And mm-hmm. I just like the celebrity shit is cool to have a, a current event or whatever, but I don't think people want to listen to two hours of us talking about Will Smith and Jada. Yeah, you yeah, feel yeah, me? yeah it's absolutely. Just like these people want because a lot of people come here to listen to us give um, information and, and insight on things that from a different perspective that they don't usually get because yeah. everybody is like regurgitating this generic ass information and answers to the same questions Agreed. and they usually get a different version of that here. And I just think they want more of that or with more of that would be um, critical. And even, even, even still with the current events, just taking those current events and generalizing them more. And because when, let's say for instance, the Jada and Will incident, we talked about that for like an hour, right? Mm-hmm. Had we just been talking about protecting black men and black men protecting women for an hour, that's a whole different conversation. Agreed. You feel me? And then it takes people out of the mindset that we're talking about Will them. And Jada. You feel mm-hmm. me? So it's almost like we just have to play with these people's mind because this show is long. You feel me? And yeah. I know personally. And we don't cut shit. We, we don't cut nothing. Right. We ain't been doing no clipping or nothing. Right, right. You feel what I'm saying? So for people to sit here and listen to us for two hours is a blessing, and they do it. Quite often, which Thanks. is insane. Thank I've never seen you watch anything for two hours. Once I see something that's going to be two hours, that shit is intimidating. I think we take that for granted, though, bro. Like, do you know how, like, it, it, even when you go to a movie, if you ever watch a two-hour movie or two thirty, you're like, this bitch long. And people rock with us. Even when you watch the live, bro, you might have 30, 40 people rock with you the whole time. Or you'll come see... We dropped one, when was it, last week? Last, we, Sunday, so not even last week. Yeah. A day ago, you got like three, 400 people that sit and watch you for two hours. So I, I think that we really underestimate that as the audience grows. Uh, but that's why podcasts are like three, four, five-year plans mm-hmm. before you see the growth. But your grassroots are so deep by then. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? People have watched you and, and followed you and heard all of your stories and opinions for that long of a time. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, And there's a lot of people, don't get it twisted, waiting for us to fail, too. They waiting right, for you absolutely. to stop. But, and you that, know what I'm saying? And, and that's that's why I say it's crazy important while we, why, while we have a... Um, a smaller following. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because these are people who are um, loyal listeners and these are people who are committed to it. They show up every week. Correct. Right? So these are the people who are going to give you the insight of what you want. These these are messages that I'm getting. This mm-hmm. is just not my own personal opinion. Mind you, we might have 40 people watch. So if I'm getting 15 messages, that's a large mm-hmm. percent of the people. Yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just... And it's like, yeah, we like what y'all doing, but we want more of this. You yeah, feel me? And we want more of that. So you have to take that in consideration because once the numbers grow, we don't know who here hating. We don't know who here just to watch us fail. We don't know who here. You feel me? But we do know our core fan base right now is people who fuck with us because right. there's very few people coming at, at, at the beginning of a venue to watch it fail. You know, right. it's just like so. It's just important that we kind of just continue to get better and continue to grow. This shit ain't going to be perfect every episode. No, no. Every yeah. episode I, I got huge, be, yeah. I got huge podcasts that I follow, and I've watched yeah. trash. Trash. Like, I've had to get off of this motherfucking 15 minutes. Like, oh, they're they going to be bullshitting today. I send you shit all the time. Like, bro, yeah. if they can do it, bro, like, watch. <laughs> like, this shit trash. Like, compared uh-huh. like, so we got we got a dope setup. We just got to keep improving it and, and not get so... Um, um, stuck on like where we are and thinking we're doing good enough. It's just gonna, it's just gotta keep improving. But like I say, everything ain't gonna be a blockbuster and everything ain't gonna be a smash hit. But you know, yeah. for the most part, I think we do a pretty good job and and it's only gonna get better. Well, what is a smash hit? Is I want to say congratulations on the album, The Cost of Living. Dope. Absolutely, that. just Appreciate dropped. Was that. that last Friday? Was uh, that Friday you yeah, dropped? Friday, you just dropped Friday. out of nowhere on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Friday, and, uh, April first. Had a dope turnout uh, at the album release party. 
I had a good fucking time with that motherfucker though. Like that's I would rather that kind of event than go to the club. I said that yeah, too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Bro. And what's crazy for me though, bro, is that I met a I've been doing music for so long, bro, that um I ain't even really I I never really even trip on like being famous or making it, like what people would call making it. Um just a small intimate event like that made it worth putting the album out. Mm, just seeing yeah. a few people that appreciate it. You feel me? So if the people, and I, I'm at a space now to where I don't really give a fuck who listened to it. You feel me? I'm going to put it out and I'm going to promote it. And I appreciate everybody that grabs hold to it. But um, I think I'm at a stage now with music to where I have, um, I create cult fan bases. Like the type of right. shit I do is like, like all of my, the people who fuck with my music have been fucking with my music and they always show up. So if I could just keep adding on to that bandwagon, I'm fine. I'll never have to be yeah. the most famous artist in the world. I just want what I do to be appreciated. And I do feel like a lot of this shit will be appreciated as it should long after I'm gone. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to let you be famous until you die any goddamn way. Right. Um, but, yeah, I definitely, um, Cost of Living is out on all platforms. Facts, um, YouTube, everything, all that shit. So go get that. And Gorilla Gardens is still out, too. And we're going to keep pumping. You know, um, but yeah, this is this is one of my favorite projects that I've done by far. I just feel like it's um, it's really full. Yeah, it's put together. It's like yeah. beginning to end. There's only one song I skip every fucking time. Yeah. I turn it on because it don't really fit. I just put it on. The every day. artist got that though. Yeah, that yeah. one song you like. Why did I do? But right. you don't believe the fans don't even notice the people right, who love know, your right, album. Right, right. They've they been to like that song. You be like, right. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's the um the song with Boosie is the one I always skip. I always skip that one, but I, I know why you skip it too. Yeah. It's too manufactured for yeah, you. Yeah, it's not my. That's, I know your yeah, person. That's not genuine. It's that's, so that's, funny yeah. because I had a girl um, yesterday. I think who was I talking to? I can't remember. But she was like, "Yeah, Bones album was good." I was like, "Yeah, man." I like so far, whole heart. She was like, "No, that first 48. <laughs> Yeah, but see, in that but day, see that's yeah. what it's for. That's it's a manufacturer. Yeah. But I'm saying yeah. she yeah. loved it though. So yeah, it's they, like the a lot first of people one. do. A lot of people do. But it's the one I hate the most. It's the one that I can't. That, that bitch come on. Why just the one and that's I gonna skip pop? It. Right. But I, I understand. I yeah. did it because I understand what it's for. It's just just because I don't prefer a certain type of music mm-hmm. don't mean I don't know how to make it or don't understand how it's worked. Right. No, but she I grew said up your in the studio. On the beat was dope. Yeah, I grew up in the studio to where it's like, um, we we chased hits. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't about doing what you wanted to do. It was about chasing hits. And whoever had the hit was going to pop. Right. And, when, and because I wasn't somebody who um, was an entertainer or, or did that kind of music, I would write for the other artists who did that. You feel me? I would help them with their songs, and I would get royalties on that. Right. But, I, I like, bro, there's not an avenue or area of music that I don't understand. Of. Like, I think I would be one of the dopest A&Rs in the world. That's ultimately what I want to do is just be an A&R, A&R and put out talent. You know, um, so that's why I say I'm 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 a pump the rest of this year, and then I'm gonna go in the A and R mode after that and find me somebody who um who can do it. Cause I don't even I don't even want the extra shit to come with it. I don't want to perform. I don't want to travel. And, I want to do and, none of that. As shit. you have a performance coming up, I yeah. just saw on the fly. I'm like, this I'm not on the performing. Fly? I'm not performing. I'm showing up. Yeah, I'm up, <laughs> I looked on the fly like this nigga rapping. Is this yeah, nigga gonna no, do a show? Yeah, I don't want to do no performing. I don't want to do no traveling. I don't want to do. I'm like, bro, I've done that. That's what you know. You, that's what you know. I just like, want to make good. You aging out of the rap. Right, like, right. I, I, I regret that too. They be like, you want to perform? I'm like, nah. I would much rather put a young motherfucker on stage and let them do all that. And I sit in the back. I want to be P and Coach K. Facts. That's what I want to be. I'm plugged. I'm plugged. What's unplugged? I'll do that. See, that's different. Like small, yeah. intimate events with like live instruments and. A small audience of fifty to sixty people. What is that? Some on YouTube I can watch. It's called Unplugged. Unplugged. It's just like a live performance with yeah. like a band and a, it's like a, Tiny Desk. Uh, like yes, that. I was gonna Something say like YouTube's yeah. version of Tiny Desk. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. So okay. I love shit like that because it's more, um, it's more um, tailored around whoever the artist is. You feel right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I will definitely perform once I get to a point to where everybody knows my music. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now I ain't gotta entertain. Jay Z don't entertain. No, no. He walk around on stage and rap. Yeah, and, you, and point that motherfucker. Say right, that part for me. Right, be real. right. Yeah. So it's just like that's that's why I'm at with it, bro. Um, I just love to do it still, and I still do it, and people appreciate it, so I do it and put it out. But you know, it ain't the end all be all for me. I'm more focused on this than I am music because I just felt like this would. I'm supposed to be doing. But it's all one and the same. It's yeah. all, at this point, we all branding. So everything yeah. we do, it, it sends us back to this and this sends us to other things. And it all works as a big machine. But I'm still Absolutely. better than a lot of motherfuckers that's doing music, which is funny. I still think yeah. I'm in the top fucking 10%. And, and I'm, and, 
And it's like, bro, I don't even do this every day. Right. There's some shit where I sit down on myself, put, I'm, put out an album, I take a month down and put the shit together, and it's just as good as the shit that motherfuckers been working on all year. Well, motherfuckers don't have nothing to do but wake up and rap all day, and, and that's I, all and, they be putting out. still can't fuck with me. And I ain't even trying. This shit like riding a bike, bro. It's like, Agreed. and I think people forget um, how many years we've put in this, how much time we put in this, and I, it's, it's always confused. People still say to me, like, damn, bro, oh, you rap too? Or, 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 you, or you started rapping? I'm just like, bro. bro Next I, you started rapping. Yeah, I'm like, bro, like, this 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 was before everything. Like, right, right, yeah, right. tattooing and all the other shit just happened to pop first, which I'm grateful for. But it, it, in, in my heart, though, bro, I'm, at, at the core, I'm a rapper. Yeah. And we got to leave that old man's game shit, the young man's game shit alone. Like, that, that, that shit's societal reverse psychology that they right. play on you. You go see, you can go watch a rock dude or a folk. And it's 60s and folk. 70s. Yeah, it, it, it could be a new song. If it's a hit, it's a hit. They don't care. Country motherfucker come out tomorrow, 45, just quit his job, drop one. It I don't matter. Yeah. Lucky Day, you know, Lucky Day. Uh-huh. Lucky Day did not start making music till 30. Just right. won first Grammy at 33. Yeah, it Doesn't don't, even matter. Because, I mean, but they do that to us because you got to understand... Uh, we always complain about contractual obligations, right? Mm-hmm. It's easier to fool a young man than it is to fool an old man. Ooh, Absolutely. Yeah. And, it's, and it's easier to get a young man to say what you want him to say versus an old man. Exactly. And that's why I say rap needs guys who, um, the only thing about old rappers I have a complaint about is adaptability. You have to be able to adapt, man. And you have to, and, and if you don't want to adapt, go get some of these young cats who do what they do and just put them on your shit. And that's a way to adapt. Right. Or change your production. Get a younger producer. Do something different. Um, but we live. We're in a game, bro. The where rap controls a lot, a lot of the parts of the culture of how people think and how they function. So the older you get, it's funny in the rap game. The older you get, the more shit you have to say. But right. that's when they want you to wind down and stop. This ain't basketball, bitch. I don't have to have good knees right. to do this. But but yeah, if you, you notice, know. that's always around the time where the artist starts to understand his contract. Exactly. You always yeah. hear that all these artists is hitting thirties and shit like that. Now all of a sudden they want out. They label and they understand their contract. Now it's time for you to go. When we finally let you go, we finally rape you through the courts. So you 34, 35, we finally let you go. We ain't shot. putting no money. That's how that shit work, though. Yeah. So that's why they always, especially on the black side, they want to give it to the young because we'll sign anything at that point in time. The model should be Tech 9 If y'all don't know who he is, go look him up. You yeah. might have never heard his music. He's never on the fucking radio unless you probably live in Kansas City where he's from. You never see him, but he's on the Forbes every fucking year but he, for rap. And this nigga might be 45. He might be older than that. Yeah, he I think might he, be. I think he, I think he is actually older than that. But the That'd thing cool about him, though, is that he um he falls more in the category of what you're saying when you talk about rock artists and shit, though. He's more alternative. He ain't really considered uh rap. But the thing, but the thing is, well, I'm not gonna say that because the nigga he rap, he he, he, he raps, raps, yeah, he but, raps. But you know, but you you know what I mean, like yeah. he the ain't nigga he is fifty, yeah, yeah, he's fifty, <laughs> and he's and he's, yeah. he's he's not of the um one like what? Snoop rap too, but we don't consider Snoop rap like that. It's yeah. like it's almost like, bro, he he he, yeah, he cause it's a darkness to him. He has he has his cult like following because it comes with the uh, he's like he he his fan base is insane clown posse ish. You feel me? Like, they but it wasn't. Too. But it wasn't always that because he was a gangster rapper for a minute. I mean, he was uh, early, but he, but he didn't pop at doing that. He popped no, when he went. To he the was more, on Wayne album. Yeah, but he, but, his, but he was his, still Tech Nine, though. right? Like, he's a blood. Yeah, he is. Yeah, but, yeah, but he, but bro, he when he popped is when he started going to the more like he, more of his fans are white than black. But yeah, but that's because. He signed with the white man who owned the furniture store. They dope store. If you ever go do their store, a uh, dude, a millionaire white dude who owned a furniture store in Kansas City had a son who like tech yeah, nine, but and like that's how he hooked up with a rich dude, and they went 50-50 on a venture. Yeah, I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the label either though, because if NBA Young right. Boy signed with that same dude, it would, he would have the same family. Yeah, he would though. But I think everybody should fucking go that route. Yeah, I think I think I think um, tech nines. Um, He's more. He has more of an Eminem fan base. Like I can agree with that, yeah, especially now. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's always been that way because he's one of those. Um, he's black. Like urban communities um, let go of skilled rappers a long time ago. The way you could flip words and rap real fast and shit. Like we let go of that a long time ago. You feel me? If right, you ain't right. talking about what we own and what we doing, drip I and fashion agree. and shit like that, we ain't know him. And right. he doesn't rap about that. Right. You feel me? He raps about being good at rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being the best MC. Mm-hmm. Like, we ain't on that. You right. feel me? So he that's why I say his fan base is different and his fan base is loyal because there's so little of that 
that's out that's good. But the mm-hmm. model that he's using can be copied no matter what genre. No, you're absolutely, in. absolutely. Right. Absolutely. His his money comes from merchandising. But NBA, touring, but, right. But NBA, NBA young, young boy can, has that. That yeah, he can do that the, same that's, model that's if he can. But yeah. he's gonna be in, it's gonna be a long haul for him to get out this contract. But uh, no, but he he's he's actually on the way out of his contract, and, and then see the thing about it, his contract doesn't. Brother, if you think them folks gonna let that man go, brother. But the thing about it, though, bro, I think his contract is structured a certain type of way to what. Um, but anyway, he's somebody that um, that had Dirk is like that too, right? You feel mm-hmm. me? So it's just like it's it, all it is is independence. Yeah, it is independence. It's independence, right? right. But yeah. it's that you have to get away from the fame. We're intrigued by the spotlight. You right. get what I'm saying? He doesn't care about the spotlight, but every year he's on there for tens of millions of dollars because the spotlight don't matter to him. He's cool with who his fans are. He sells the merch to whoever who loves him in in tours in the venues they want to fuck with him and he don't use none of that other shit yeah, NBA young boy could you use that but them folks ain't letting him go no time what, what? so who, who you think paid for them lawyers who you think got mm-hmm. him out of jail who you think paying for all that and I need that back yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I need that back yeah and, and and that's that's Jay Prince said some shit that was hard he said would you rather have 100% of a grape or 10% of a watermelon that makes sense that's fucking me up. It, it, would you rather have? Want, I mean, would you rather have a hundred percent of a grape or ten percent of a watermelon? Stop saying. No, I'm just no, no, but that's, I'm just it's a lot no, more. I'm joking. The I get what more. he's trying to say. The watermelon's more. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because you're getting instead of getting a lot of a little bit, you're getting a little bit of a lot. So you're so getting that's what, more. So basically, he's he. So he is he saying that to sign with the label? Then is no, he saying no, take ten percent no. of the watermelon? No, no, no. What I'm saying is what I'm saying is this is that. When you're independent, right? Mm-hmm. You're um, you're getting. Well, I guess this is the reverse of that. When you um, when you're independent, you're gonna get. You may have fewer fans, but you're getting all of your money. Right, right. So, so Tech Nine can sell ten percent of what Young Boy sells and still make. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just my, view yeah, this great time. as yeah. independent. Okay, right, yeah, right, 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 right. Okay, I cool. That, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, and that's all I I want to be, especially at this point in stage. Like, I don't really give a fuck about none of that extra shit. But yeah, that's why I say I don't care yeah. about being famous because yeah. what's funny is if I get a hundred thousand fans. Rich, I'm rich. <laughs> good, and that's, good that's rich. more. That's that's yeah, that yeah. I got ten. I got ten to twenty now. Yeah, just multiply that. Look, look at what and chance the rapper made TV. off them hats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You if you get you if when you get the right buzz going. All those mixtapes for yeah. hundred. A Chance the rapper is somebody that took. Yeah, that yeah, and he and he made all that money off fucking three hats. Yeah. Yeah. People, it wasn't albums. You can see his album now. He ain't doing numbers. The one he just dropped, well, he rapping about Jesus now, and I don't. I love Jesus myself. But I'm just <laughs> saying, don't it ain't, it ain't for rap. But yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I think we covered it all, man. Congratulations on the album. Appreciate uh, it. Congratulations on the party, and let's keep on moving. Tania, when your album drop, you know mm. what I'm saying. No, probably like 2024. We got to work on you. I'm going to start writing you some lyrics. We got to get you, you know, get you, uh, get Janae on the track with you or something. I would die. Y'all mm-hmm. have to just send it to her. I can't do that. I don't need, y'all need you to fan out in there, um, Janae. What? Thank y'all for tuning into the Anxiety Issues Podcast. I'm Adam 12 Taylor. This is my brother Boneface of Boneface Inc. And the amazing hairstylist, Tania Monroe. Thank y'all for tuning in. Good night.